Lord praises to the Most High. We give uh, thanks to the Most High and to his son, Jesus the Christ, who allowed himself to be put to death for the resurrection of the nation of Israel. Because by right, and this is something that we all need to remember, by right, we we're all supposed to be destroyed. When we broke that first covenant, that was it for us. Had it not been for the uh, death of, of our Savior, the Lord, Christ, we will all be condemned to destruction. But it's because of that selfless action. And we know the scriptures say that there was a time when the affliction and the thought of death rested on our Savior. Where he said, is it possible that this cup could be taken from me? He was really feeling, feeling it. And then he stepped out of his emotions, so to speak, and remembered the program. And he said, if it be thy will, that's what I'm about. I'm not quoting it, right? He said, let it be according to thy will. And that was it. So he went and was pierced for our sake, crucified for our sake, not for his sake, but for our sake. And oftentimes we forget that. We forget that had it not been for him, we were, we were rightfully doomed. Rightfully doomed. So we need to keep that thought in our mind as we go through our menial lives, I should put it. As we go through our lives, we need to remember that someone paid a price for us to even be here today. And we need to walk and carry ourselves with that thought. Carry ourselves with the thought that it is Christ's blood that paid the price for us to be able to even be alive that we're going to get the kingdom. Y'all all right? Just food for thought, brothers and sisters. And that doesn't exclude any of us. From bishop on down, all of us, we have to remember that. Y'all all right? The name of today's class is the kingdom of God in you versus you, the self in you. Now, trying to figure out what that title means. I'm going to say it again. The kingdom of God in you versus or opposed to you, the self in you. The self in you. So you is the spirit that the Most High is dealing with. Y'all understand that? The self is what, is what was made in Babylon. In other words, we have a different kind of thinking as a result of this uh, satanic environment that we live in. And this has caused us to think differently as opposed to what God made us for. We were made to be the Israelites. We were made to be the children of the Most High, men and women, sons of God, daughters of Sarah. You were made to be the instruments of God on this planet Earth. But someone has, has disrupted our minds and cause us to be everything else except what God made us. And then we end up turning that into, oh, that's my own life. That's my own opinion. No, you don't have your, your opinion is Babylon. My opinion is television. My opinion is Facebook. My opinion is what I learned in the streets. No, God didn't make you for that. So this is what we need to understand about what the Lord created us for and how we are operating in that world that the Most High created. Are we going to be what God made us or are we going to continue to go on the road to destruction? We've had one chance. Christ died for us. That gave us a chance to repent and get ourselves right. But if we don't want to do that, then there's a judgment for that too. Okay? So, um, I want to... I want to first start out and greet you here in Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, it's been a while since I've been here. I was reminded. That I didn't really forget, but I've, I've been running around quite a bit. But um, I'm happy, very happy to be here among you. It's absolutely a delight to be here and to see your faces once again. And uh, like I said, it's the last time, and I, I guess I moving around so much I couldn't really hold on to it. But I said that I would be much more frequent than one of y'all reminded me of like five months, right? 
That was you five months ago. That ain't good. That ain't good. So we, we, yes, sir, I'm glad. I'm glad to be back here. Um, there's a lot of things going on in the Carolinas in terms of getting things, getting things up and rolling. So it's, it involves a lot of work. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. And I'm, I'm happy about it. And, uh, you know, we're about to get this train really, really moving. Okay, so things are looking good. Just wanted to tell y'all that, give y'all a little bit of uh, a little bit of insight to what's going on behind the scenes. Y'all all right? All right. Um, first thing I want to address is how many people in here are new? Are there any new people in here? Anyone that's new? Okay. Huh? Since the last time I was here, I should say that. Since the last time I was here. All right. One, two, three. Got, got a few, some sisters. Okay. All praises. All right. Um, and the reason why I want to ask that, because this, this class is not really, um, it's not geared toward beginners, as some might, might think, because when I ask about new spirits, I'm not just saying that it's going to be a class that's geared only to them. It's going to incorporate new spirits, but it's also going to be a, ref it's not even really a refresher. It's really just something for us to pay attention to, even those that are, even those in the body that are well seasoned. I'm talking about top ranks all the way down. This class is for everybody. Y'all all right? We use the term welcome home, all right? Especially you new brothers and sisters, you've heard that term used with us before when we say welcome home. I want to go through and I want to explain uh, somewhat in detail on what that means because we say it, y'all, if y'all, you know, many of, we watch the uh, broadcasts, the uh, headquarters broadcast with Bishop and at the end of the class, I imagine we do it all over. But that's the, that's the class that everybody gets to watch at the same time. So I'm making reference to that. When we um, watch the class at the end, you see the new brothers and sisters that are stand up. And they'll introduce themselves, how they came into the truth, what led them, you know, things, these kinds of things. What brought you through these doors? And then at the, at the end of that dialogue, we tell them, welcome home. We tell them, welcome home. And to me, you know, I always tell the story about when it was first said to me. And as, actually, that, uh, that, that phrase became coined uh, through us because of that experience that I went through. So um, when we say welcome home, I, wanted, I want everybody to understand exactly what that means. And I'm gonna, my class is going to be geared to that. And it's going to be geared to the journey on how we get ourselves right to the kingdom. So when I said the kingdom of God in you versus the self that's in you, this is what this class is about. Because when we come through these doors, your journey begins. Your journey to the kingdom begins. That's what I'm going to talk about. So, like I said, welcome home, quote unquote is a journey through a spiritual tunnel of trials, trials, trials. Meaning you're coming in and you're trying to clean yourselves up, men and women. Trying to clean your thinking up. Trying to clean your speech up, your actions, everything about you. You're trying to, to correct and conform to God's words. That's a trial in itself because we've been incubated, deep fried, baked in evil, baked in wickedness, turned over in wickedness, fried, flipped over and fried again in wickedness. So it's going to take some time to get that out of us. And repentance is a process. A lot of times brothers and sisters will, can have a conversation with other brothers and sisters or with people in general. And they will use the word, I'm repented. I got it. I'm in the truth. Yes, you're in the truth. But in that truth that you're in is a journey. It's an actual process. It's not the one-time thing. It's constant. You've seen high officials in organiz well, in IUIC or in kids' like groups, period. 
that have been for many years. Then all of a sudden, boom, they're gone. Why? Because they endured up until a certain time. What stopped them from enduring to the end? That tells you that none of us have made it. Give me the scriptures. Who's reading? Where is that? Okay. Give me uh, Matthew 24, verse uh, 13. Listen to that. Hold it. Start with verse uh, 12. Read 12 and 13. Let me show you something. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 12. Now, let me, let me say this here before he reads. Try to take good notes because I'm going to be moving around a little bit. Okay? And try to remember the thought. Okay? So what we're reading about is about when we say that we're repentant, because it's, it's really no different from the people in the church says, I am saved with the E-D, with the D on the end, meaning past tense, meaning saved from what? If I say I'm saved, that means the battle is over. Can you dig it? If you're saved, there is no more journey. There's no more trial. It's done. I've made it. When we say we repented, and we, we still have that church mentality thinking that we could just lean back and coast. No, your journey has just began. Y'all all right? Let's read. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound. And because sin shall abound in these last days. In these days here, sin is going to be rampant. People that once sat beside you and studied the Bible with you are going to be in sin, and then you'll see them on YouTube, you'll see them on Facebook, and evil is like their right-hand man, and you can't tell them anything. You try to tell them that they're wrong, they're telling you you're wrong. Because sin shall abound, meaning that it's prevalent everywhere, meaning in their thoughts, in their actions, in their speech, everything. Read, read it again. And because iniquity shall abound. And because iniquity shall grow to its height. To its height. Go ahead. The love of many shall wax cold. The commandments. That's what the love is. The commandments in many shall wax dead. That's what the cold means. Meaning that the commandments will be gone. Y'all all right? Let's read that again. And because iniquity shall abound. So these are the days that we're into. These are, this, this is the time that we're in. And because iniquity shall abound, sin shall abound. The love of many shall wax cold. The commandments in many shall wax dead. Shall wax dead. So what time period are we talking about? Matthew 24 is going into talking about the last days. Can I get a witness? Give me Isaiah 1 and 9. Isaiah 1 and 9. And then also give me Isaiah 33 and 6. I need those Isaiah 1 and 9. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 9. Except the Lord of hosts had left us, left unto us a small remnant, we should have been as Sodom and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. So that's not just talking about the Sodom agenda. Because along with the Sodom agenda is also talking about the, the abounding of iniquity, all kinds of iniquity. So along with the uh, sodomy and Gomorrah that we read about here is also going to be coupled with iniquity, just plain iniquity in every category. Can y'all dig it? That's what's going to be abounding in these last days. That's going to be all around you. False brethren, false sisters, lying this, lying brothers, lying sisters, gossipers, talebearers, murderers, extortionists, you name it. That's what's going to be out here, all over the place. Can y'all dig it? Uh, read, read that again. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 9. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. So the small remnant is us. We're the small remnant, the ones of us that's going to make it to the end. That's the small remnant that it's talking about. 
And with that small remnant, God going to use that small remnant, to, that rem, that small remnant to take the planet Earth and put it right side up. Because the Earth right now is out of course. So when the Lord said in Isaiah, uh, what is it, 29, 16, 29, 15, 16, surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. The most high going to use that, that small remnant to turn things and esteem it correctly. That's when the trees, like in Isaiah 14, is going to say they're going to be glad. They say, since thou, meaning the evil ones, have been laid down, no fella has come up against thee. That's when, that's when, this, that's when, the, that's when the vegetation and everything going to be glad. The fir trees shall rejoice at thee, the scriptures say, because the right rulers are ruling. That's that remnant there. That's, that's what's going to do that. So we have a journey before we get there, brothers and sisters. Can y'all dig it? That's a long journey. So along your journey, we better watch out for, for road bumps. We better watch out for pitfalls along the way. So don't sit back and think you got it. Next thing you know, whoop, your car's off the road. You're done. And that's what happens. You look next to you. The seat used to be filled with a brother. The seat is empty now. What? What happened? Sister was here. Whoop, she gone. That's what it's talking about. Was that it? Yes, sir. Now, go to Isaiah uh, 33 and 6. Isaiah chapter 33 and verse 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. The stability and wisdom and knowledge. The wisdom and knowledge is the application of God's scriptures. The wisdom and knowledge is the laws and the, and the application of God's laws, which gives you wisdom. When you know how to apply God's laws, that means you know how to execute proper judgment in decisions. When certain, when certain decisions come before you, when certain situations come before you, excuse me, the mind says, what decision will I make concerning this? And if your mind is not filled with the laws of God, you will make the wrong decision. And that is not wisdom. Wisdom comes when you know how to apply God's laws in these situations. Y'all all right? That comes by reading and studying and application, like Bishop tells SPA. What does SPA stand for? Or SPA? Study, pray, apply. Study, pray, and apply. When we don't do this, we're going to be that chair next to the brother or the sister that's empty. Why? Because the, the, the times are unstable, but if you don't have the wisdom and knowledge on applying these commandments, you will not be stable in these times. Y'all all right? Read that again. Isaiah chapter 33 and verse 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time. And the wisdom and knowledge, the wisdom and knowledge of God's laws and commandments shall be the stability. Shall stabilize you in what? In thy times. Meaning in your times, in the end time. When there's a Sodom agenda all around us. When there's, where iniquity is abounding all around us. You will need to know how to apply the wisdom and knowledge of God to stabilize you during these troubled times. Y'all all right? All right. Now, that's it for that, right, brothers? That's it for that, right? There's some more on there, sir. Go ahead. Yes, sir. I needed the rest of it. Come and, on. And strength of salvation. And what is the, what is the wisdom and knowledge of God? And strength. It is, the, it is the stability of thy times, and it is also what? Strength of salvation. It is the strength of our salvation. See, I couldn't leave that out. It is the strength of our salvation. That's the power in this book. No, it's not just words on paper. No, it's not just words in a book, in a binder, and think it has no, uh, has no properties to make things happen. The Bible is sitting on people's shelves closed. It's not doing anything. But once the Bible is open and you start applying, once you start studying, praying, and applying to what's in here, it makes changes within your thoughts. As your thoughts begin to change, what else change? Your words change. Then your actions change. Then your habits change. Then your character change. 
Can you dig it? And then your what? Your destiny changes. So there is power in these words, brothers and sisters. But you have to hold the line. Y'all all right? Hold the line. Read. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. What is the fear of the Lord? What is the fear of the Lord? A lot of times we just run past these things, but what does it mean the fear of the Lord is his treasure? What is that talking about? Stand up. What is the fear of his Lord? What is the fear of the Lord? Go ahead. Shalom, leadership. Shalom. Uh, the fear of the Lord is the keeping of the commandments. Yes. S Psalms 111.10. Psalms 111.10 says what? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yes, the beginning of wisdom. There's another scripture that I'm going to read. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Give me Ecclesiastes. Let me, let me take it a, a, a bump it a step further. Ecclesiastes uh, 12 and 13, I think it is. Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. Listen. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. The conclusion means it. That's everything. There's nothing left after that. Let us hear the conclusion of the entire matter. Go ahead. Fear God. There's that word again. Fear God. What did it say in Isaiah? The fear of the Lord is its treasure. We're going to read about it now. It says what? Fear God. Fear God and keep his commandments. And do what? And keep his commandments. And keep his commandments. Listen. Go ahead. For this is the whole duty of man. This is the whole reason why you was put on this earth. This is the entire reason why breath was put into your body. When the Lord resurrected us in Ezekiel 37, when he raised us up from the valley of the dry bones, the dead bones, so you can understand, our purpose of being raised up is for us to keep God's commandments. That's the duty. That's the reason why we was raised up, so that we could be the vessels of God's word. Can y'all dig it? All right. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, let's go back to what I was saying. So, uh, Matthew, again. Matthew 24, 12 and 13. Everybody's with me, right? Okay. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound. And because iniquity shall abound, sin shall be in abundance all around us. Go the, ahead. The love of many shall wax cold. The commandments shall wax cold. But it says the love of many shall wax cold. Let's read what the love of God is. Because somebody, be, somebody might not understand why I'm saying that the love is God's commandments. Because it ain't talking about me hugging and kissing you. That ain't what it's talking about. Get the scripture. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 3. For this is the love of God. For this is the definition of God's love. That we keep his commandments. That we keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. That we keep his commandments. Go ahead. And his commandments are not grievous. His commandments are not grievous because you was made to keep God's commandments. How in the world something that's made for you turn out to be grievous to you? Because your head has been turned upside down and refried in Babylon to the point where we hate what was, what was made for us. We was made to keep God's laws. But something intercepted our thinking and caused us to be grievous when it comes to God's laws. That means our thinking is upside down. So when the, when the evil turned, when the wicked turned the earth upside down, he turned your head upside down as well. To the point where God's love is associated with being grievous. Where God's commandments is associated with grief. And you love evil. You love wickedness. You love gossip on Facebook. You love tailbearing on YouTube. We love that. What they call it? Clickbait. Clickbait. I had to learn that. Y'all know I'm an old fogey, right? Clickbait. And I understood, you know, I understand about, you know, when you t put certain titles in and you put it in a particular way that draws attention, that's clickbait. You see something and be like, wow, mm, I got to click that. 
Look at that. They talking about doing this and they talking about doing that. Click, click, click. They understand your mind. The clickbait inventors. The people that the engineers of this of this filth that edit videos and stuff like that. They understand the mind. They understand what Negroes want. They understand the temptation that we want. So they'll put that stuff out there. And you'll be like, I just can't resist. Click, click, click. Clickbait. You was baited in and you clicked it and boom, you got bird boxed. Y'all all right? All right. Where am I at? Uh, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 13. Yes, read. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. The same shall be saved if he or she endures until when? Until the end. Until the end. That's either when Christ comes back or you die or you're dead. Anything before that you give up, you might as well never have come into this truth before. And Christ says that. It's better for you to have not known the way of righteousness than to know about righteousness and then to turn away from righteousness. That's in the Bible. Y'all know that, right? Can I get a witness? Sisters, y'all aware of that? All right. Now, so like I said, with that understanding, that's a prelude to the class that I'm about to give. With that understanding about how we have to endure, it's about endurance. It's about endurance. Is about endurance. Um, Matthew 22 and 14. Endurance, endurance. Matthew 22, 14. Matthew chapter 22 and verse 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. For many are called, but few are chosen. We are all called into this truth, but what guarantees that our calling will be sure. Y'all know the scripture. Second Peter 1 10. For many are called, but few are chosen. So the objective after you recognize that you've been called is to apply diligence to make sure that that calling is a true calling and that I don't fall out later. Read it. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 10. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. The scriptures say, wherefore, wherefore the rather, wherefore the rather, I'm trying to, yeah, I got it. Wherefore the rather, see, I'm stopping on those words, meaning your, your action is to be opposed to doing the wrong thing. Wherefore the rather, meaning instead of doing that, it rather you do this. Wherefore the rather, go ahead. Brethren, brethren, give, give diligence. Give diligence, dedication, so you can understand. Dedication, go ahead. To make your calling and election sure. So now, now you're called, but you want to make sure that that calling is a true calling where you are an elected person of God. Y'all all right? And this goes for men and women. Make sure that your calling is a sure calling. That you read it again? Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. When you're giving diligence, you got you to think about those words. When you're giving diligence, that means you're exercising discipline. That means you're circumspect of evil. That means you're circumspect of someone trying to come in and take you out of the uh, spirit of being diligent. That means you're watchful. That means that when evil comes your way, my diligent spirit be like, hell no. Y'all understand that? Because I'm trying to maintain my discipline. I'm trying to maintain my, my diligence. So I'm not going to entertain that evil. The hell with you. That's the spirit you have to have in this. Can y'all dig it? Yes, sir. Read that again. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. I want to be called and I want to make sure that my calling is a sure calling, is a sure election, so that I can make it to the end. Like the scriptures say, he that endureth until the end shall be saved. You ain't going to get that unless you're disciplined and you exercise diligence in making sure 
that you abstain uh, 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 from evil, that you eschew evil. Go ahead. For if you do these things, for if you apply diligence and discipline to make sure that your calling is a sure calling by diligence, if you do this, go ahead, ye shall never fall. That's easy. That's easy instruction. Why is it that we fall from this? We're going to tell you why. I'm going, we're going to go through the lesson to show you why we fall out after reading something very simple and tell us what to do. Y'all all right? All right. Now we're getting to the lesson. I was talking about welcome home earlier, right? Welcome home, we come in, and welcome home actually is a process of us finding our way back home. We are the Israelites, but we have become the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Well, if you're lost, you're not home. Welcome home means to be brought back to where you were strayed from, meaning the Bible, meaning understanding that this Bible is your mail. It is your personal business. It is your home. It is your constitution. That's what our elder used to tell us, the elder Masha. He said this Bible is a constitution. Tells you how your government is supposed to be set up so you can understand. Tells you who your friends are, who your enemies are. Tells you what to eat, what not to eat, how to dress. Tells you how to deal with your brothers and sisters, Matthew 18, things like things of that nature. Gives you moral character, moral laws, civil laws, so we can be civil among each other. That's a constitution, brothers and sisters. Y'all understand that? That's what, that's what this Bible is to us. Where am I at? Where, where was I reading? No, I was talking about welcome home, right? Yes, sir. So welcome home, again, is a process of us learning all of this. We were lost, and when we, when we became lost, we forgot that this is what we are about. This Bible is your photo album. I like to put it in words like that. Photo album. You open up the Bible, well, you open up your photo albums, and you see your grandparents in there. You see Uncle Jim, this and that one, with his plaid pants on. You know what I'm talking about, right? Sunflower, this. Huh? You'd be laughing at, ooh, look at Jim. But the point is, you recognize that thing. Then they show you you when you was a baby. Look at you. Man, you, you know, and you doing something wicked. They caught you in the middle of it, running like knocking over something. And they took a picture of that. And you recognize that thing. And you feel a kinship to that. You see, you see your journey as a family. You see your family tree. You see your history. That's what the Bible is to us. When we read in the, when we read in the Bible, we're reading about our male so you can understand. Can y'all dig it? When you're in church, you don't get that understanding. You think you're reading about somebody else when you're really reading about, or rather, hearing about yourselves, because you don't really read it when you're in church. Y'all all right? So, welcome home is a real understanding that you are coming back to your maker. When I first heard those words, I understood that. When that man said that to me, when I walked into the school for the first time in 91, and that was said to me, I almost cried because I understood, I understood what he meant. Y'all all right? That's what this Bible is to us. Welcome home. Like I said, it is a journey through a spiritual tunnel of trials. Welcome home is like being bought, brought back from amnesia. Amnesia. That's what we are in this society. We are, we are, we suffer from amnesia when it comes to who we are. Huh? Like y'all watched that movie. What was that movie? The Born Identity with Jason Bourne. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? And he suffered, but he had to try to find out where he got all that from. That's us. That's, that's us. We over here in this society and all of the rules are changing different. We don't understand them. And when we try to understand them, we get caught up. And the next thing you know, bam, we in jail. Bam, we on drugs. Bam, we, 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 we in psychiatric hospitals or whatever. Y'all understand? Because we, we, are, we are operating without our nucleus. We are operating without our base. We are operating outside of the brain of our nation. We are operating outside of the constitution of our nation. So that's how we've become lost. Okay? 
So, like I said, welcome home. The quote is a journey through a spiritual trial, a spiritual tunnel of trials. Welcome home is also like being brought back from an am amnesia state. This was what happened to us. Jeremiah 17. Let's get some scriptures now. Jeremiah chapter uh, 17, verse 1 to 5. I'm going to read about us a little bit now. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 1. The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron. This is how we became lost because of the evil that we were doing as Israelites when we knew who we were. But because we decided to not follow the Most High. We decided to not follow fear me and keep my commandments. We decided to not do that. Go ahead. And with the point of a diamond, it is graven upon the table of their heart. So the sin that we committed against the Most High, the Most High says it's like, it's like a, a sin that's written with a diamond point, meaning it's engraved, unforgettable. Go ahead. And upon the horns of your altars. Read. Verse 2. Whilst their children remember their altars and their groves by the green trees. We was making gods out of, out of stumps. We were doing some wicked stuff back then, cutting out little figures and worshiping it and pissing the Lord off. Go ahead. Upon the and we hills. taught it to our kids. We tied our kids doing that, making our kids pass through the fire and sacrificing our kids to these demon gods like Tammuz and all that mess. Go ahead. Verse 3. O oh, my mountain in the field, I will give thy substance and all thy treasures to the spoil. Don't, so look what how the Lord says, okay, this is how you're going to deal with me? All of the riches and the abundance that I gave you, Israel, I'm going to give it to the nations. Go ahead. And thy high places for sin throughout all thy borders. Go ahead. Verse 4. And thou, even, thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thy inheritance. That's how we became super lost. Thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from your heritage heritage is all about us when you talk about your heritage you're talking about your family tree you're talking about your inheritance the things that are passed down to you rites of passage whatever you want to call it all of the things that pertain to us as a nation is your heritage your name for instance your language all of those things are part of your heritage go ahead that i gave thee and so, i will go ahead and i will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. Go ahead. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. Which shall burn for a very long, long time. Okay? And it's still burning. It's still burning. So the Lord said, he said, we shall discontinue from our heritage, and he's going to cast us into lands that are not ours. To a land that we knew nothing about. and that's just, So we fulfilling Bible prophecy, are we, brothers and sisters? Yes, sir. Read. Verse 5. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm. So we trusted in our own counsel. We also trusted in the gods of the other nations, but we did not trust in the Most High. We did not trust in our leaders that were teaching us right. We disregarded them. Like Jeremiah, they want to kill him. Read that again. Thus saith the Lord, cursed be the man that trusteth in a man. That trusteth in man. Come on. And maketh flesh his arm. That maketh flesh his arm. Your arm represents your strength. When it says that you make flesh your strength, you put your trust in man. That's what flesh is. You made, you made man your strength. That's what your arm means. That we've trusted in man and made man our strength. That's what your arm represents. Y'all all right? Read. And whose heart departeth from the Lord. And whose mind departed from God. And that's what's wrong with us now. That's why our heads are upside down. Where the laws of God is grievous. But sin and evil, we wear it like a glove. We love it. Y'all all right? Now. This happened to all the 12 tribes. I just basically read about Southern Kingdom there. But this happened to all the tribes. Let's find out. Second Ezra, chapter uh, 13 and 40 on down. Second Ezra. Now, we read this when we're bringing up the information about the other tribes. Those are the 10 tribes. You know about that, right? Yes, sir. 
But I'm going to pull something out of here to show you. Well, it's here, so it's not like something deep. But I want to focus on a part of this. Read it. Second Ezra chapter 13 and verse 40. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Osea, the king whom Salmaneser, the king of Assyria, led away captive. And he carried them over the waters. And so came they into another land. So y'all know this history. The kingdom of Assyria came down and conquered, conquered Samaria, took northern kingdom first, brought northern kingdom into captivity. So Assyria had northern kingdom into captivity. Then Babylon rose up and took down Assyria. And when they took down Assyria, they also took Assyria's captives, which was northern kingdom. And then they came and got Judah also. Okay. Read. Verse 41. But they took this counsel among themselves. But they took this counsel. This was during the time of Cyrus. In the time of Cyrus and Ezra. So you can understand. When liberty was granted to allow Israel to go back and rebuild because Babylon had destroyed the temple that time. Y'all understand that? Okay? That's when, when you read about it in the Psalms. Where they said, race it, race it. Uh, even to the foundation thereof. That was when Babylon was destroying, uh, d destroying our temple. Okay? And they were cheering. The Edomites was cheering and also in part physically participating in our destruction. That's the reason why it says further down in that chapter, remember the children of Edom who said in the day of our destruction, destroy it, destroy it, even to the foundation thereof. Okay? So that was when that temple was destroyed. During the time of Cyrus... That was when we was allowed to go back and rebuild that under Zerubbabel and Nehemiah and all that. Y'all all right. Uh, read that again. Verse 41. But they took this counsel among themselves. But they took this counsel among themselves. Go ahead. That Meaning they, that, that we would go and build. Go ahead. It's going to tell you that. That they would leave the multitude of the heathen. That we would leave the multitude of the nations. Go ahead. And go forth into a further country. Where never mankind dwelt. That was, when the, that was when the northern kingdom tribes came over to the side of the world. Y'all all right? That's what that's talking about there. Read. Verse 42. That they might there keep their statutes, which they never kept in their own land. That's the proof that northern kingdom messed up just like Judah. That was the part that I wanted to get to. Read that statement again. Verse 42. That they might keep their statutes, which they never kept in their own land. That's the reason why the Lord moved against them. He not only moved against northern kingdom, but he moved against Judah. That's why it said in Kings, he, uh, and also Judah kept not the laws. Okay, because northern kingdom had messed up, and that's what it's telling you here. It says, um, where's that part again? Which they never, that they might there, meaning in this new land, that they might there keep their statutes, which they never kept in their own land. So not only did Judah lose our inheritance, like we read in Jeremiah 17, that also happened with Northern Kingdom. So all 12 tribes are in trouble. Y'all all right? And we're over here in Babylon oppressed together, like it says in another part of the scriptures. Everybody's with me so far. Yes, Keep reading. Verse 43. And they entered into the Euphrates by the narrow passages of the river. God's giving you the geographic route, which is, which is our history again. The literal geographic map positioned route on how we got here. On how they got here, I should say, the northern kingdom. Hell, some of us, we run around talking about we Judah. We might be northern kingdom, don't even know it. Y'all all right? I'm just throwing that out there. Read. Verse 44. For the Most High then showed signs for them and held still the flood till they were passed over. Go ahead. For through that country there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half. And the same region is called Arsereth. Now, normally we stop there, but I wanted to read the next verse. And, then, and that same region is called Arsereth. And they got it in certain records that they said that Columbus, uh, what did they say? Columbus identified Arsereth as America. Right? Am I quoting that right? It was Columbus, right? That's what they wrote in, the, in one of these encyclopedias. They said that uh, Columbus identified, well, I got a lot of other records that say that anyway, but the, the ones that's promulgated on most of the media, that's what on most of the outlets, they tell you that, okay? That uh, Columbus identified this land, Osirith, with America. Uh, read 46. Verse 46. 
Then dwelt they there until the later time. Then dwelt then dwelt they there until the latter time. The latter time meaning what? The last days. The same days that we was talking about earlier. The, the wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. When sin shall abound all around us, we are in those latter times now. And all 12 tribes are here. Y'all all right? Oppressed together. Yes, we're scattered up and down. The uh, Mainly the bulk of us are in North, Central, and South America. Yes, and scattered all over the planet. We understand that. But the bulk of the Israelites that is talking about is in, this, in these countries here. Y'all understand that? Okay? And in terms of uh, the description that it gives in Genesis 49 and in Deuteronomy 33, that's what I'm talking about. Israel is like the sand of the sea, so we're all over, but the Most High is focusing on these uh, tribes that came over here on these ships and on this part of the, uh, on this part of the world. Y'all with me? Then dwelt they there until the latter time. That's all I want out of that. Now, so now we're here, and our reality begins. We're in this country. We've been taught lies, fed all kinds of evil. Our minds are upside down. Our thinking is upside down. Our thoughts, everything about us is upside down. So now God sends the spirit to wake you up, and now we come through these doors. Then our journey begins. Welcome home. Y'all all right? So now we're being welcomed back to the journey that brings us to our salvation. The journey. The journey. The journey. Deuteronomy 28, 47. Deuteronomy 28, 47. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. For the abundance of all things, meaning the whole planet, like I said earlier, the whole planet Earth was made for Israel, made for us. And that's what we're supposed to be doing on this earth, acting like the Lord gave it to us and doing what he said in order to keep it. But because we didn't do what he said, this is why he says what he's saying here. Read it again. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. And because we did not serve the Lord our God with joyfulness, instead we served it with grievousness. We did not serve the Lord our God with joyfulness. We're supposed to be joyful when it came to God's commandments. But the Most High said that the laws became grievous to us. The opposite of grief is joy. We did the total opposite. We did a 180 in our spirit against the Most High. We're supposed to be joyful. Go ahead. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. Read that bottom part of 47 again. Because I was on joyfulness. Joyfulness and what? Joyfulness and with gladness of heart. Because we did not serve the Lord our God with joyfulness and gladness of heart. Here come the Super Bowl. We're glad. Here come the famous fighting boxing match we're glad racing home some almost getting into accidents trying to get to the tv getting speeding tickets because of the tv because they want to catch the fight they want to catch this they want to catch that but when it comes to keeping god's laws we late we come up with excuses <sighs> that's our spirit huh right there's no joyfulness there Read, read. Joyfulness and what? With joyfulness and with gladness of heart. Gladness in the mind. Listen to what the Lord is going to say after this. For the abundance of all things. What, what crazy people will not be joyful and glad, and glad for the abundance of everything? The whole planet Earth given to us. He said, I made the world for your sake. We are the Israelites, no doubt about it. I don't need to read the Bible any further to, to know because we are that crazy. When I read about crazy people in the Bible and I look out here, I say, yeah, these are Israelites here. Ain't nobody else this stupid. <laughs> For the abundance of all things, the whole planet Earth was given to us. God would not even have made the planet if he wasn't going to put you on it. He says, if, he said, if the, he said, I'll get rid of the stars 
and the moon and all of that if I'm not going to have Israel on it. Y'all know what I'm talking about. He said, if those ordinances depart from before me, then I get rid of the seed of Israel. Well, that's telling you. That's telling you that the whole planet Earth and everything in it was made because God was going to put you on it. We weren't happy with that. Read. For the abundance of all things, the abundance of all things, therefore shall thou... Because of that, because you don't have any sense, because you're crazy as hell, what am I going to do? Therefore what? Thou shalt serve thine enemies. You shall serve your enemies. Go ahead. Which he didn't say, friends, you shall serve your enemies. He's very clear. You shall serve the people that hate you. They that hate you shall rule over you. Because you weren't glad that I gave you everything. But that's, you, you can't even put that in an equation. That's crazy. You can't even put that in a sentence. Go ahead. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst. So he's going to make us serve our enemies in hunger. When we need food, we got to go to enemies in order to eat. That's, that's some real degradation there. Every nation is supposed to be able to provide its own food. But no, he said, no, I'm not going to do that because I'm going to curse your basket. I'm going to curse your store. I'm going to curse your savings. I'm going to curse all that and make you go to people that hate you to eat. Why? Because you piss me off. Go ahead. And in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. I don't need the bombs. But I, I appreciate it, though. But lean back on the bombs. I want them to get this verse. <laughs> Read that again. Therefore shall the Lord, Lord shall send against thee in hunger. The Lord shall... S Read that again. Something ain't the, right the way you read Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. Go ahead. In hunger. In hunger, whenever we need food, we got to go to our enemies. Come on. And in thirst. And in thirst, do you have to go to get water? From your enemies. You're supposed to have your own water supply. Go ahead. And in nakedness. And in nakedness to clothe your body. You want to put clothes on your wife and kids. You got to go to your enemies. Think about that. My wife and kids will be walking around here naked. How am I going to put clothes on them? I have to go to the people that hate my guts in order to clothe my woman. In order to clothe my children. That's a slap in the man's face, brothers. Read. And in want of all things. And in the need of all things. That's what want means. The lack. And all of the things that you lack and need, you'll have to go to them for everything. If you need to have a baby, you got to go to a hospital. You got to go to everything you need, education, regardless of what it is, you got to go to your enemies for it. Why? Because we made God mad. Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So this is the destruction of our minds is what caused us to be the way we are now. And it's our fault because we turn our back on our God in the first place. So God has some mercy on us. In, in all of this craziness that we are exhibiting on this planet Earth, he still sent his son to die for that rebellious people to get our minds right. And he says what? He says, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. When is he going to take them off? When we are destroyed. Until he have destroyed thee. So once we are destroyed, I don't need to keep the chain on you no more because your mind is upside down. Your mind is reflecting of the chains that I had on your body. Before he took the chains off, you was resisting because your mind was still trying to be free. But your body was being held. After a while, you recognize that your mind can't get you out of those chains. So what happens to your thinking? Your thinking begins to conform to the limit of those chains. Your mind begins to conform to the limits of, uh, and the confines of that chain or those yokes of iron. Once you come to that point, he says, I don't have to keep the chain on no more because the mind followed the body. And they have conformed to mental chains where they hate each other now. They don't trust each other. They try to set each other up. They rape, they rob, they murder, they tell bear 
against each other. It's a heavy deal. So us coming back is to reverse all of that. That's going to take some work. That's not going to happen as soon as you walk in the door talking about I'm saved. No. That's a journey. 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 Let us be hip to that thing. Let us be hip to that. So, uh, the Bible shows us certain realities that flash in our mind. I'm talking about history now. That flash in our minds. When we are taught the Bible properly, when we are taught the Bible proper, properly, we read it and we begin to see flashes or glimpses of us. When we hit Deuteronomy 28, certain flashes come to our mind. Like, what was the movie I was talking about? Uh, Born Identity. Remember how he would have flashes. And he would remember where he came from a little bit. And he's trying to put the pieces together. That's what the Bible does to us when we open it, when it's, pro when it's properly taught to us. Little sparks of memory, spark plugs, begin to pop in our minds. And we begin to wake up little by little. Y'all all right? Y'all understand? So I, I wrote, I said, the Bible shows us certain realities that flash in our minds when we are taught the Bible properly. When we go to the Christian churches, we hear certain sections and passages of the Bible, but the realities of the Bible are purposely left out. Many of y'all been to church, y'all know what I'm talking about. You're sitting up there reading about yourselves, but you will never come to that conclusion because they're, either they don't know it, which is very slim, the rulers of the society, they know who you are, and they will not teach it to you, and they will try to ban you from learning it. Y'all all right? And the reason why they do this is because these realities may link with your spirit that you are, in fact, the children and the people, the sons and daughters of God. They don't need that because the whole world depends on our ignorance. The whole planet Earth is being fueled by, our, by us in ignorance. Y'all all right? These realities are intended, meaning the, the scriptures in the Bible, are intended to be that spark plug to gyrate or stimulate memory through history. When we look at, when we go through history and, and understand history and read about us and read about the history in the Bible, it begins to send uh, signals to your spirit that, wait a minute, I'm an Israelite. I'm a Jew. I'm Ephraim. I'm Manessa, I'm Gad, I'm Reuben, I'm Benjamin, I'm Levi. They don't want that. But the Bible has that connection to your head. Y'all all right? Then the journey becomes a lesson in discipline against temptation. So once you come to the realization that you are Israel, you come through these doors and the word welcome home or the phrase or the term welcome home is being told to you as you come in. That's when your journey actually begins. Y'all all right? Your journey begins there. And your journey uh, becomes a lesson in discipline against temptations. The, the temptations is what you've been incubated in when you was out there in the world. When you come in these doors, you're still sick. The temptations are still there. Through the process of, applic uh, of applying God's laws, study, praying, and applying, you're going to find that these laws are going to war against those temptations. And that's where the fight begins. That's where the journey begins. That's where that spiritual tunnel of trials begin. Y'all all right? I once said this. I'm going to try to uh, rehash this statement. Imagine being blindfolded. I want to make sure I told this right. A mind, uh, imagine being blindfolded, captured, and dragged onto a cargo ship. You're taken down into the holds of an actual ship. You don't understand what I'm saying. That's how we were brought over here. Can I get a witness? We were dragged over here, brought, to the, brought onto this boat, and they took us down into the holds where cargo is normally kept, not human beings. We did not come over here on a ship that had beds and chairs. We came on a ship that was designed for cargo, boxes, 
freight. They put human beings on that. They put us on that, tied us up, chained us up. We're lying in its, in, on each other, vomiting, feces, urine for months. That's our history. That's in this Bible. So when we, be, when we begin to read things like that, flashes begin to pop in our minds. But that's the beginning of your journey, just to, uh, just to acknowledge that. Okay? So uh, imagine going through those things and think about that for a moment. You're on this ship for months. Then you hit land. The blindfolds are removed. You try to remember the bumps and the tosses on your way here. You're trying to, you're trying to find your way home. But, but how do, what, what path did we get? You don't even know where you are, number one. Now you, you have no idea which way the ship came, but you're trying to remember Follow me. Isaiah 22 and 18. Keep that in mind. Isaiah chapter 22 and verse 18. He will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. That's what happened to us on the slave ships. The ship was rocking. That's what caused us to get seasick, vomiting, all that kind of stuff. That's what the Lord said. Okay, read. There shalt thou die. And the Most High said we were going to die. A lot of us died on those ships. Huh? Now this, now this scripture, precept upon precept, because it's in a chapter where they're talking about us in history. But this precept pertains to us also. I mean, pertains to them ships. Read that beginning part again. He will surely violently turn. Violently. And that ship was rocking, vomiting all over the place. Go ahead. Turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. Go ahead. There shalt thou die. There shalt thou die. That's all I wanted that. There shalt thou die. So our lives was worth nothing. Go to Deuteronomy 28 verse 49 now. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. From the end of the earth. As Meaning a whole different people. Esau, so you can understand. Go ahead. As swift as the eagle flyeth. That's the clue right there who he's talking about. Go ahead. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. They, don't you know they had to have, think about it. They didn't, we didn't speak the language that these people spoke on the ship. Think about that. A lot of times we look past that. How when we were on the ship, how were they telling us what to do on the ship? Don't you know they had translators? Some of our, some of our, some people would put on the ship that could translate the commands, that could translate us to do slave. Our women were raped on those ships. Men were made harlots on those ships by people doing these things to you that you don't even understand their language, and they have to have an interpreter to tell you what to do when the when the so-called masters wanted you to do certain things. So there was a whole lot of rebellion, a whole lot of uh, revolts. Whole lot of things happen on those ships. Y'all all right? And if a group of us got together and started talking in our language, that isolated him. Shut up that noise. Fire some cannon. We understood that. That's a universal language. You hear that cannon go boom, that means death. You don't need no interpreter for that. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So a lot of our people died because of that thing. Read. A nation of fierce countenance. Which a fierce countenance. These people had no regard uh, for what they did to us and still don't. These are things that need to be formulated in our minds to cause us to stop doing the evil that we do to one another. You see the kind of you see how these people deal with us? Come on. Which shall not regard the person of the old. They don't care about the old man, the young man. They don't care about none of that. The old women, they don't care about that. In slavery, what did they do when a the, when the slave got too old in their mind, which was probably about 40, because they worked his body to death? They give him some poison and kill him because to keep him alive and he can't do no work for you is a liability. Can I get a witness? Give him some poison to kill him. Hell, I ain't taking care of this nigga. He ain't doing no work for me. Give him something. Put him something in his, in his slop trough because that's how they used to feed us. 
Next thing you know, the old man dead, 40 years old, 45 years old. I've come across records where uh, there was burial grounds that was found in New York where they found bones from a nine-year-old kid that bones and muscles had detached from his, from his, from his uh, uh, what they call it, tibula, fibula, the, the, the bones in the arm. Huh? Am I saying that right? No, the femur is the leg. Tibula, fibula, which part of that? The, the, the shin? That's the legs, right? The tibula, fibula. Okay, I'm trying to get my parts together. But in the arms, though, what's what they call these? Huh? Just arms? Huh? All right, never mind. We can look that up. But my point is, the work, <laughs> y'all all right? The work that the brothers would be doing, the little nine-year-old boys, they took, they examined the bones from this burial ground. And they, and they was able to calculate. They said, this boy must have been nine years old. But the, the, the stress on his neck, the vertebrae on his neck and on his arms were work. The tendons, right, that's the muscle. The tendons were ripped from the, from the bones because of the hard work that a nine-year-old kid was doing. Nine years old. Y'all hear what I'm saying? That's, and he was worked to death. Died. Read that again. A nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show, show favor to the young. Nor show favor to the young. So they, they worked out young men and, wor and young women to death. That's the kind of people we were dealing with and still dealing with them. Read. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle. Come on. And the fruit of thy land until thou be destroyed. Read. What verse are you in now? Verse 51. Okay. Give me verse 66. Deuteronomy we was talking about, the reason why I'm reading this is because we was talking about that in this country, we shall die. That's the precept that I'm coming from. Y'all all right? Y'all with me? Yes, sir. Verse 66, read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 66. And thy life shall hang in doubt. And our lives hung in doubt. Still to this day, our lives hang in doubt, but especially on those ships. You don't know if you're going to die that moment. You don't know what you're about to face. Here you, you were married before they dragged you onto the ship. Your wife was on the ship with you. You don't know if this maniac, could, uh, you know what, I want to take her and rape her. How you going to feel about that as a man? You might have to die that day. Just because this man looked upon my wife and he wants her. Read. And thy life shall hang in doubt before and your thee. Life, and our lives shall hang in doubt before our own eyes. Go ahead. And thou shalt fear day and night. This is us. We were afraid in the daytime and at night we were afraid. Go ahead. And shall have none assurance of thy life. There, there thou shalt die. You shall have no assurance. You can't even promise that you're going to live for another hour. Imagine what that does to you psychologically. You don't even know when your life might end. That's what you call terror. Terror. They're talking about terrorists. You terrorize right there. Every day. So, sisters send their young babies out to go to school or whatever. You don't know if your child going to come back home. You don't know if your child, your daughters, your sons going to get raped or murdered or robbed. This is some evil going on out here, brothers and sisters. Read. In the morning thou shalt say, would God it were even. Go ahead. And at even thou shalt fear, and, 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 and at even thou shalt say, would God, if it were morning. So what this is talking, it says, in the morning thou shalt say, would God, it were evening. Could you please help me make it to, to sundown? Because you don't know if your life going to end during the day. Can I make it to at least, can I get to the night? And then at the night, will I live to see the next day? That's some fear and terror. Fear and terror. Read. For the fear of thine heart, wherewith thou shalt fear. For the fear of your mind. Go ahead. And for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. And we saw a lot of terrible things on those ships. A lot of terrible act activities on us. Before we even got over here, we were seeing horrible atrocities on those ships. Read. Verse 68. Come on. And, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Egypt is slavery. He will bring us into slavery again, but this time you're going to get there on ships. Go ahead. 
By the way whereof I spake unto thee. The same way that Moses said it was going to happen is exactly the way it happened. That's how it's recorded with the yokes of iron and all that. The way he said it was the way it happened. By the way, I spake this to you. Go ahead. Thou shalt see it no more again. You will not see your homeland no more again. So welcome home is about going back to our homeland eventually. But the process begins today. Y'all understand that? Read. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. And there ye shall die, like we read early. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies, not your friends. Therefore you shall serve your enemies, not your friends. There ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Go ahead. For bond men. For slave men. And bond women. And slave women. So it ain't just the man. The women went into slavery too. Go ahead. And no man shall buy you. And no man shall redeem us from this reality that's about to hit upon us. Y'all all right? So we remember our journey from the roughness of the waters and the events experienced on board. Now, this is only going to come to you once you start to see glimpses of history. When you start seeing glimpses of, of realities that happen on those ships. In other words, when you see these things, it's going to instantly resonate in your spirit. And you're going to put yourself back on the ship when you see these realities, when you read about these realities. When you open up this Bible and you're reading about yokes of iron, you feel that. When you read about uh, uh, the yokes of iron and you read about uh, women being taken away from us and raped, we feel that. That's the connection. That's the spark plugs. That's the Jason Bourne flashes. Y'all all right? So we remember those things. We remember uh, the roughness of being tossed to and fro like a ball on the waters and the events that was experienced on board the ship. We remember the vomiting that we vomited on each other, being tossed and chained to be taken overboard because of rebellion. Because when a group of us rebelled, they got rid of us. And if we got sick or acquired some kind of sickness, they got rid of us because they did not want the whole entire investment to get wiped out with sickness. So they got rid of the quote-unquote sick ones. Let's see how they did it. Who's on the board? Give me the video. Start at 517. Let's get the video. Y'all all right? Go to 517. 517. 517, 517, is that it? Yeah, okay, hit it. Back it up a little bit, because it was more, it was, back it up a couple of, click it right there, all right, click it right there. I want to make sure they get all the scene. Now, that's us on the ship, and in the, in the holds of the ship. Y'all don't see any, any rooms like on a cruise ship, do y'all? Y'all don't see any beds and chairs like lounge chairs where you're sitting around the pool with your feet up. You don't see that. That ain't the love boat. Read, hit it. Come on, read, right? Click, clickbait. <laughs> Turn it up. That's it. So you stop it right there. Those were realities that happened to us for months. Ships had an average of about 90 days. That was two to three months minimum. So plenty of that happened. This is what happened to us for our disobedience. This is, this is the reality. There thou shalt die. Okay? And so the surviving cargo that made it here went through even worse stuff. They got other documentaries that show you these things here. These document, documentaries would not really have any real significance if you didn't find them in the Bible. Once you read about them in the Bible, now you recognize 
that this history that everybody's talking about is talking about you and you're the Israelites. And when the Most High send that spirit on you to come in here, your journey begins to get them coming back to your home that you've lost. So we've journeyed a long way. Look at all that craziness that we went through and still going through stuff. Y'all all right? Brother's kind of silent now. How did that grab you? How did that scene grab you? Huh? Mm, 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 mm. So now, when I talked about this journey, when I said imagine being blindfolded and brought over here, I'm going to compare that to something else. Compare that to being kidnapped. I'm going to bring it up to date now. Something, you know, something that's more... I don't want to use the word re relevant because that was definitely relevant. Uh, but I want to bring it to uh, an, ex uh, an illustration that might resonate the second time in your minds. Compare that to being kidnapped. A bag is hastily crimped over your head. You know how they put the, nap put the bag over your head and tie you up so you can't see where you're going? It's put over your head and neck and you were thrown into a car and taken to some horrible place. Kidnapped. They bag you so you can't see where you're going. Now you're in a car and you're bouncing around. Um, uh, let's see. You remember some details during the ride as you're bumped because you can't see. The specific bumps in the road, you remember those. You remember going over a couple of railroad tracks. You try to file that in your mind because you're trying to think, how would I find my way back home? I remember we had a bump, then we made a left turn. I felt the car move like this. I felt the car move like that. Follow me what I'm saying. Y'all all right? I felt a certain jolt this way. So if I ever see the road, I'm going to know that this was the road that I came on. A couple of railroad tracks, a couple of twists. Then I noticed that the road, the road noise in the car changed when the car went from paved roads to dirt roads. You're trying to keep these things in your mind for memory's sake. Y'all all right? That's what our history does to us. Just, just follow me. Um, the Bible brings our past to us to cause us to remember who we are. The Bible is coming up and it shows you the bumps that you went through. It shows you when you went over the railroad tracks. It shows you when your car went from pavement to dirt roads. That's how we begin to find our way back home. You follow me? Through understanding who we are. Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9, verse 25. So, through all of that long journey and all this ugliness that we went through, we end up in this country where we shall die. Romans chapter 9, verse 25 and 26. Listen. Now, what I'm doing now is showing you right prior to us repenting. That's what I just read primarily about the slave ships. Because when we were... It's a reality. Even before we came into the knowledge that we were the Israelites, we knew that we were brought over here on those slave ships. Did we not, brothers and sisters? Okay, so we recognize that history. The only connection comes in is when we realize that the Bible says that you shall go into captivity again with ships. That's when you say, okay, wait a minute. So that road that we was rocking on, that water and them bumps and tossing and turning that we went through, that's in the Bible and we're the Israelites. That begins to change Begins to gyrate things in your mind. Read. Romans chapter 9 and verse 25. As he saith also in OC, I will call them my people, which were not my people. O OC is the book of Hosea. When you read Hosea, the first chapter, verse 10, it says the same thing. He says, also in the book of Hosea, I will call them my people. Go ahead. Which were not my people. We will change our names were changed. They lied about us all the way up and down. They lied about our Savior. They lied about everything. It says, there ye shall be what? Did I skip something? It says, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. So it says, I will call them my people, which were not my people, and I will call her my beloved, which was not my beloved. Meaning you. Go ahead. You sisters. You brothers. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them. And it shall come to pass in the place, in the place, in the place. Remember that word place. Let me hit it again later on in the lesson. In the place where it was said to you and me. Go ahead. Ye are not my people. You, they said it to us. You're niggas. 
your wetbacks, your spicks, your monkeys, your Negro. That's what they said to us. Where it was said to us that you are not the children of God. Look at all of the hell that they give us for calling ourselves Israelites. They're trying to label us a hate group where nothing but hate has been shown towards us since we came out of our mothers. Go ahead. There shall they be called the children of God. There, in the same place, you are going to be told that you're the children of God. That's the importance of these camps. These brothers are going out to camp. Y'all all right? And the, pro and the importance of us teaching. There, in the same place, it shall be said unto you that you are the children of the living God. And I'm going to use my Bible to show you who you are. That's what God is saying. Y'all all right? Now, how will this happen? Romans chapter 8, verse 16 now. Romans chapter 8, verse 16. Just stay with me. We're going to go through these scriptures now. Romans chapter 8 and verse 16. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit. The spirit itself, which is the Bible. This is the spirit. The Bible itself does what? Bear witness with our spirit. It bears witness with our mind, with our remembrance, with our history, with what we know. The Bible itself bears what? Bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So once we understand, our spirit understands that we were brought over here on the slave ships, but the spirit of God says that those same people that was brought over here, that was called nothings, that was called everything but the children of God, and there you shall be called the children of the Most High. It is that spirit that told us that, no, we're not niggas. We're not spear, we're not spear chuckers. We're not Jones. Yeah. Can y'all dig it? We're not colored people. Coon, hand bone, shine. No. You are the children of God. That's what this spirit told us. Can y'all can y'all dig it? So, so now we're in this place. The bag is off. You can see now. You have eyes. You can see what you can see the reality. And now we're trying to find our way back home. Because the spirit bared witness with our spirit. We're the Israelites. So now what do I do once I found out that I'm an Israelite? It's time for me to go back home. That, that clip that y'all saw was from the movie Amistad. Okay. For those of you that didn't know, you can actually look it up, rent it, or well, they don't have rent shops anymore. What do they do? This order Netflix or something. Y'all can see these things, right? Y'all can tell I'm old, right? Talking about rent movies, DVD, DVD, uh, VHS, DVD, you know, Red Box. Lord have mercy. These things don't even exist anymore, right? They're gone. <sighs> Blockbuster, yeah. You know, I found a Blockbuster card in my. <laughs> <laughs> Long expired, though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we're trying to find our way back home. The term welcome home describes a process, like I said in the beginning, on how we are to return home. Welcome home is the roadmap. It's the blueprint that describes how we got here. Like I talked about identifying certain bumps on the road identifying certain sounds on our journey. I'm, I'm dramatizing that, but when in reality, the sounds and the bumps was yokes of iron on our necks, our women being raped. All these things journeyed us up to now. And we read about that, and it tells you in here, in this spirit, that that's the children of Israel that that happened to. So it recognized with our spirit, or resonated with our spirit, that we are the children of the living God. So, how do we get ourselves together? It's the blueprint. It's the roadmap that describes how we got here, which also, in effect, shows us the journey on how we are to get back home and also what is required in order to make it back home. Repent. That's one of the requirements is for us to repent. And once we do that, then the term has new meaning, welcome home. Now you understand what welcome home means. It means us getting back to what we've lost. And once that was said to me and said to you, that's what it means. You're back on your journey 
to going back to where you never knew that's where you came from. But the spirit told you because you didn't know who you was. I didn't know who I was. But the spirit said, no, you're not lost. You're not an ox and an ass. You're the Israelites. Keep that in mind. We must teach our people to awaken from their dead state. That's how this process begins. The Most High has stages in waking us up. I talked about that remnant in the beginning. That remnant is going out here and teaching our brothers and sisters and causing them to come in, causing them to come into the body. We're going to read about that statement as well. Christ spoke about it. Um, Isaiah 52. I'm going to finish my lesson. I mean, I'm, I, I, I can't stop this one. Y'all all right? Read. Isaiah 52, verse 1. Isaiah chapter 52 and verse 1. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments. Go ahead. O Jerusalem, the holy city, for henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. So when we say awake, awake, we're saying that to the people that was called, they weren't, that, that was uh, being referred to as not the children of God. There it shall be told unto you, awake, awake, for you are the children of the Lord. There it shall be told for you, awake, awake, and put on your strength, O Israel. Put on your beautiful garments, O Israel. Rise and shine and stand up. That's what this is talking about. So that's being said to us. Read. Verse 2. Shake thyself from the dust. Shake yourselves from the dust of ignorance. Shake yourselves from the dust of evil and wickedness and wicked thoughts. Repent and change. That's what he's saying. The dust of mental destruction, filthy thinking, filthy actions, filthy communication. Shake yourselves from that. Go ahead. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Arise and sit down and learn my Bible to fix your head. Study, pray, and apply. Sit down. Get it together. Come on. O Jerusalem, loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. Loose yourself from the temptations. That's what it's talking about. Loose yourself from your simple, stupid addictions. The things that, I, I just can't put it down. I just can't stop it. Loose yourself from that. Come on. O oh, captive daughter of Zion. And you're captivated in evil. You're captivated in sin. The white man took the chains off of you physically and you're still captive. Why? Because you've allowed the captivity to stay in your head. Loose yourselves from that. Come on. Verse 3. For thus saith the Lord, ye have sold yourselves for naught. Look at what was, we have sold ourselves to remain in evil. For no profit, what are you going to get? Death. We've sold ourselves against God's laws, against God's redemption, against his program, against his deliverance and repentance and diligence. For what? For nothing. I just can't put it down. Then you're going to die. That's what's going to happen. Come on. And ye shall be redeemed without money. You sold yourselves for nothing, therefore... It's not going to require you any money to be redeemed because money is not going to save you. A lot of people think that they're going to make all kinds of money out here doing wickedness and think they're going to get delivered. You're going to burn. You're going to die. The only way you're going to be delivered is by keeping God's laws for this is the whole duty of man and woman. That's how you're going to get redeemed. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 20. So this is what we're teaching when we go out into the streets. Awake, O, o Zion. Wake up. Put on thy strength. Proverbs 1 and 20. Come on. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 20. Wisdom crieth without. And when the prophets go out, this, this remnant of teachers that the Lord is raising up, when they go out, they are to cry wisdom out to the people, to the Israelites. To wake them up. To show them who they are. Wisdom cries without. Come on. 
She uttereth her voice in the street. She, she, the wisdom, uttereth her voice in the streets. That's where we at, in the streets, bringing out the Bible. Not our own words, not our own thoughts, bringing this out, because this is the spirit that's going to jive with your spirit that caused you to clean yourselves up. Read. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the, lead, in the opening of the gates, in the main cities, wherever we at, we out there in the streets. Reaching our people. And yes, that's, that, that mission is going to continue. Go ahead. In the city, she uttered her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? Come on. And the scorners delight in their scorning. Scorners meaning people that are scoffing against the Bible. They, they delight in their disobedience. They delight in their rebellion. They delight in their evil. Just listen to that. And scorners delight in their scorner. In other words, they enjoy being wicked. They take delight in being wicked. They are glad to be wicked and hate correction. Hate the Bible. Hate the commandments of God. But they love evil. They love the wickedness that you see on Facebook, on YouTube. Them dumb, stupid videos that they got bird boxing the hell out of people. They love that. Go ahead. And fools hate knowledge. And fools hate correction. Fools hate God's Bible. Go ahead. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. Turn at my reproof. Turn at my correction. I will pour my spirit unto you. So when we're out there teaching, we're trying to bring the brothers and sisters in. Telling them to turn around. Change. Get your mind right. Go ahead. I will make known my words unto you. I will make my words known unto you. Go ahead. That's what he's done. He's reacquainting us with our own history. We should not have to be reintroduced to the words and, and Bible that is ours. I will make known my words to you because we've lost that. We've lost that connection. But the most I said, because we discontinued from our heritage, I got to turn it back to you. That's the spirit of Elijah when you read Malachi. That's what it's talking about that too. And he would turn the heart of the children to their fathers and their fathers back to the children, meaning the Bible. Bring the Bible and the Israelites as one. Before I smite the earth with a curse, meaning the bombs. Read. Verse 24. Because I have called... And ye refuse. So, because I have called. Remember I talked about the many are called? We're called into this truth. Some people are trying to, some people we're trying to call while we're at the camps. And they never come in because they never make it past that first group. When I said that first group, I'm talking about the four different categories that every Israelite man and woman going to go through. Talking about the, the, the parable of the sower and the seed so you can understand. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Okay, you had the first group that, that was by the wayside. And the minute they were hearing the teachings, immediately Satan came up on him. Put some bug in his ear and boom, he's gone. That's the first group. We're trying to compel them to come get themselves right. Go ahead, read. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. Go ahead. But ye have set at naught all my counsel. But you... Rebellious Israelites have set at nothing all God's counsel. We don't want to hear none of what God is saying. We've said it, close it up. When if, once you close the Bible, it's no problem. The problem comes is when the Bible is open, not only when it's open, but when the words begin to affect behavior. That's when the problem comes in. Deacon Asaph will be on this program and he said y'all know how he get y'all gonna die people got mad at him because he said it but i'm like hell it's in the bible well they say we don't care if it's in the bible because as long as the bible is closed we don't have to hear it but we got a problem when you tell us we gonna die because the bible is having an effect when the prophets speak it y'all understand that when the words of god is being spoken it has the power to move minds to stir up behavior to make change to take a brother off of dope. To take a girl out of prostitution. That's the change that it makes. The wicked says, hell no. 
close that Bible. We don't have a problem with the Bible. We have a problem with what the Bible can do. And it will only do when it's open and read and studied and prayed upon and then you apply it. That's when it's going to have an effect. Y'all all right? Read. But ye have set at naught all my counsel and would none of my reproof. Go ahead. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. So the Lord says that when your calamity and all those things come because you refuse my counsel, you refuse my correction, when your destruction comes, I'm going to laugh at you. Go ahead. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. And your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, meaning trucks destruction all around you. Go ahead. When distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me. Then you're going to call on to the Lord. But because you was disobedient to his counsel, you was disobedient to him calling you, the Lord said what? But I will not answer. I'm not hearing you at that time. Now it's time for you to get it. Go ahead. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Mm. Verse 29. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. And they did not choose the commandments of the Lord. There's that word fear again. Read. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. They, they despised all of God's reproof. So the ones that despise the counsel of the Lord also goes with those that fell out of this truth. Remember I talked about the chair next to you? This also goes with that as well. Many of the people that sat beside you came and started it off. Was told welcome home and all of that. Broke bread. Broke bread. But when the council continued to, uh, to instruct you to stay in God's commandments, you began to back out. You didn't want to hear that. You began to change the Bible in your mind. And you began to try to teach others also. So the Lord says, okay, it's time for me to wipe you out. So those that despise God's counsel and fell out of the truth and now have buried themselves in a blanket of extreme hatred. Y'all see some of this stuff. Huh? YouTube, Facebook, that's why I talk about that. Extreme hatred is going on now. Iniquity is abounding all over the place. I'm hearing wild, crazy doctrines, chicken on Passover, stuff like that. Mashed potatoes and cra craziness. Huh? Am I, am, am, I ain't making this up, am I? Can I get a witness? All right. Just, just want to make sure it wasn't me. To the point where they think that it's of the Lord. That's when the reprobate has seriously hit you. You don't even read about that stuff in the Bible, and yet you're saying that that's what the Bible's talking about. You've lost it. Your mind is done. That's what the most I say, I'm not going to answer you. I'm, I'm going to allow that same doctrine to take you to your destruction. And being in this truth for many years, I've seen it happen over and over again. So I'm not fazed by it. Y'all understand that. Here's the scripture concerning hatred against your brother. Romans 13 and 10. Romans 13 and 10. Romans chapter 13 and verse 10. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. So love worketh. The, in other words, the commandments does not cause you to be ill to your brother. That's what that's telling you. That the commandments does not allow for you to be ill towards your brother. Y'all understand me? You wouldn't be doing doing things to destroy your brothers to destroy because the objective is to cause them to repent if anything but rather reprove them but if i'm leak if i'm seeking out to destroy a brother to destroy a sister the bible says i'm not with you on that y'all understand that love worketh no ill to his neighbor therefore love is the fulfilling of the law no part of the law tells you to do the evil that I've seen some of these people do. Y'all all right? Work of no ill to his neighbor. That's all I'm going to say on that. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to let God deal with the evil that's going on out here. Um, 
the message is, is that the Lord wants us all to repent. Y'all with me? I'm moving on in my lesson. Y'all all right? The Lord wants us all to repent. Give me the book of Luke chapter 14, verse 23. I'm talking about us going back and bringing our people to this truth. Like, a, like we was reading earlier, how do we cause our people to repent? Like the scriptures also said in Romans 9, uh, 25 and 26, there it shall be said unto them, you are the children of the living God. We have to teach that to our people. Okay? So that's what I'm talking about now. We have to bring our people in. Matthew, you got it? You yes, got sir. the scripture? Luke? Yes, sir. 14, 23. Read. Luke chapter 14 and verse 23. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highway and hedges. Go into the streets. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. Go ahead. And compel them. And do what? Hold it. And, and what? And compel them. You know what it means to compel? Meaning you got to bring it raw, hot. Hit them in the head with it. Give examples. Show them the HD TV reality that's in the Bible so they can see it. Bring up the pictures. Show the slave ships. That's why I reference video to compel you to keep your mind right. Compel them. When I'm, com when I'm trying to compel somebody, I'm not arguing with no fool. You coming with some daggone Egyptian mess. Get the, get the hell out of my face. <laughs> I didn't say it. <laughs> huh? <laughs> I was going to say face, right? Get the face out of my face, right? Y'all all right? <laughs> Get the hell away from me. <laughs> I'm not arguing with no fool. I ain't got time for that. <laughs> Keep your minds up. Yeah, I know. Keep your minds up. See where their minds went? Now, they, well, I wasn't going to say that, right? I was going to say Fox. Get the fox. But look where their minds went. Huh? Think about that. Because I didn't say it. But y'all minds went there, didn't it? That's just a test. Shame on you. <laughs> Compel them to come in. Read that again. 23. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highway and hedges. And compel them to come in. And compel them. Agitate them. Bring it straight up. Wake them up. You can't be out there soft with the Bible. You got to hit them hard. Crack that eggshell. Compel them to come what? To come in. That my house may be filled. The Most High was wanting all of our brothers and sisters to come in so they can be welcomed home. Y'all all right? Sisters, y'all all right? Brothers, y'all all right? So we have to compel them to come in. Compel them to come in. Compel them. But after we make it past the seeds that fell by the wayside, I'm talking about the people that's finally being compelled to come in. Y'all follow me in my thoughts, right? The brothers and sisters that's in the camps, those that make it past Satan immediately trying to take them out, they've, they've weathered that. Because a lot of times, or sometimes, you'll be teaching a brother. I'm talking about you brothers in camps, right? Well, y'all teaching, y'all dealing with the spirit, then here comes some knucklehead come up with some Egyptian crap. And you want to say to him, get the fox out of my face. Y'all all right? <laughs> You want to tell him to get the stepping. But he's messing with the brother or the sister. And the next thing you know, boom, the brother or the sister is gone. Satan immediately came and took the seed that was sown in his mind and he's gone. But the ones that make it past that, where do they come? They come here. They come into the body. And what happens? Welcome home. So now the journey begins. Everybody's with me. Sisters, y'all with me. The journey begins. Um, now that we're in this truth, like I said, the journey begins. Romans 13, Romans 13 and 11. Brothers and sisters have made it past the camp. Now they're inside the body. They're here. They're, they came for the first time, second time, and they've been welcomed home. And the journey begins. The journey to repentance begins. 
That's when your fight begins. Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. Awake, awake. That's what this is talking about. Awake up. That's what we say to our brothers and sisters when they come in. Before they come in. That's how we get them to come in. Read. And that, knowing the time, that now is high time to awake out of sleep. It is high time to wake up out of sleep, out of the dust. Shake yourselves from the dust, O Israel. Loose thy bands. Break off the chains from your neck and put down these bad habits and their temptations. Be a disciplined brother and sister and put your mind and spirit before your deviant temptations that lead you to destruction. I can't put it down. God gave you a mind. What the hell you mean you can't put it down? Just do it. I can't stop. Read, for now is our salvation nearer than we believed. Than when we believed. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Why? Because we're in the last days. Sin is all around you. Evil is all around you. The, 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 the times are unstable. Remember, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. These are the times. And because of iniquity shall abound, the love of the of the of many, meaning the commandments shall wax cold, dead. People ain't keeping the commandments no more. They love evil and wickedness and actually thinking that God is with that. That's the time that we're living in now. Wake up, wake up, and recognize what time you're in, and recognize that this this is your time to stand up. It is your time to execute God's righteousness in this earth. Read. Verse 12, the night is far spent. The day is at hand. The Lord said it is high time to wake up. It is noon time. The sun is straight up in the sky and you're still in the bed sleep in ignorance. The Lord said, listen, my truth been out here. When are you going to get hip to it? The clock is 12 noon. What are you still doing in the bed? That's what the Lord is saying about his truth. He said the night is far spent. The night is gone. You're still talking about something I want to sleep a little more in ignorance and in wickedness and in your temptations and your lustful demons. You want to stay in that. And the Lord said, listen, man, I had my truth out here for a minute. When the hell are you going to wake up? Read. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Let us therefore cast off these temptations, cast off this wickedness. Talk about you can't put it down. I smoke crack and I just can't stop. What the hell you mean you can't stop? Just stop it. Some people looking at me and say, he must don't know about crack. It's, it's, a, it's, a chemical, it's a chemical addiction. If that's the case, how long did we know that crack was a chemical addiction? Where you start having withdrawals and trembling and all of that. How long did we know that? Here I'm looking at people that, I've, that were older than me get hooked on crack. I see what it did to him. I didn't see him become a lawyer or doctor. I seen him shrivel up like a worm. Huh? Then they got some real crack, crack addicts that know how to hide it and, and be doing business and all that, but they don't last long. That crack get them after a while. Huh? But I see what it did to him. I don't need to experience that. I got enough sense to know, say, listen, that didn't work for you. I see that the chemical addiction took you down a road that you can't get out of. Well, I know not to go there. There should be no people stuck on crack these days. Nobody. Because we've seen a generation of people wiped out with crack. Have we not? I'm talking about people older than us. Crack been out for a minute now. Crack been rolling before a lot of you were born. Most of us were born. People been hooked on crack, dying of crack, getting shriveled up and sick and bugged out on crack. What the hell you mean you're going to bring crack to me and say, hey, man, let me try that. Pass that over. What in the world am I going to think like that for when I've seen what it's, what it's doing? Yes, you can stop it. Put it down. Now, I see somebody else using it. Like I said, none of us should be doing crack. None of us should be on dope. None of us. We've seen the results of it. Read. Before and, I go, before I go too far, and let us put on the armor of light, and let us put on the armor of God's laws. Let us put on the commandments of God's laws. 
Let us put that on. Smoke that. <laughs> Let us put on the what? Armor of light. Go ahead. Let us walk honestly. Let us walk honestly. You don't want to be called anything other than honest. You want to be looked at upon as a, you want to be an example of righteousness. And I'm trying my best to do that. And I hope that's the same thing for you. All of us should be doing our best to be an example of what we're reading. Study, praying, and applying over. Yes, there's going to be some bumps. Yes, there's going to be some bruises. Yes, there's going to be some trials. But you should make it, make it forged in your brain that you will never give up. If I fall, I'm getting back up and I'm getting myself back together again. I will not fall. That's giving diligence. You hear me? That's how you have to be in this truth. That's how you have to be when you deal with some simple knucklehead that's trying to downgrade the Bible. I get very serious. Don't do that to me. You're insulting me. You're trying to turn me back to a coon. Hell no. I've escaped that and I'll never want to see those days again. Y'all understand me? That's how you have to be in this truth. Read. As in the day, not in writing, not in Ryan, we ain't supposed to be like that. Come on. And drunkenness. Read. Not in chambering and wantonness. Not in strife and envying. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. But he says, so we're not supposed to be in rioting, drunkenness, chambering, all this lewd dancing and all this kind of stuff. Uh, wantonness, greed, and strife, striving against each other and envious of each other. That's the Negro. That's black people. That's Hispanic people. That's the Israelites without the Bible. We got to get away from that. Y'all all right? Because you were not brought over here to be black. <laughs> you were brought over here because you're the Israelites and you broke God's laws. And this whole trial is because the Most High says I have to punish you for what you did against me. But I'm going to provide you a way out. You don't have to die in this. The Lord puts the trials on you for you to learn from your mistakes so that you could be the example to the next brother and sister to raise them up. Say, so listen, brother, I've been through that. And look, I got myself out of it. You don't have to go down that road because I've already been there. That's what we're supposed to be to our brothers and sisters. Same thing with these young girls coming up. You older women, y'all know what time it is. Y'all know the craziness that y'all been through as women. These young girls coming up and how in the hell are they going to go through the exact same mess that you went through? Because you ain't telling them a damn thing. How are you brothers going to have brothers coming up behind you and they messing up? With all this experience that you've been through, sit your behind down and let me tell you, you don't need to go through that mess because I went through it. That's what the other nations do. They sit their children down and tell them the things. And they get an inheritance to move even further. With us, it seems like we always have to start all over again with every generation. Y'all hear me? Read. And make not provision for the flesh to, to, to fulfill the lust thereof. And not to make provisions. Don't provide an opportunity for the evil that's still inside you when you come through these doors. That's what that's talking about. The temptation, when our brothers and sisters come through these doors, the evil is still in them. That's the reason why I was telling you from the beginning that repentance is a process because the evil is still there. None of us is going to completely fit for the kingdom as of yet. Y'all follow me? But we are trying to get there, and it's going to take work. Not to make provision for the flesh. We are not to give evil an opening, basically. We're not to give evil an opportunity to overtake us. You don't, prov you don't allow that. I'm going to let you speak. You don't allow the evil to come back and take you back to the ugliness that where you just came from. Come on, Captain. No, you're saying the right thing. The thing that he's, I'm getting out of this, too, it's just like what he just said. You can't be in the body rendering evil for evil, either. You can't do that thing. If you're going to show charity to your brother, you're showing charity to yourself. If you sisters sitting there working and laboring together, y'all supposed to be laboring together as one. Not based on what she did or what she ain't doing. Y'all in here to do the work together. And that's what he's talking about. You, 
you only showing that you love the most high. And like he said, you want to learn how to offend less. You've been in the body way too long still acting like, well, I'm waiting on him to stumble and fall. Man, you got your mind messed up. You ain't even started to repent yet. It's a process. You got to come in here and get yourself together. The day is far spent. Like Dick said, you be tearing if you want to. The Lord going to be back here before you know it. I'm telling you, let's make haste in the day of time that we may show charity and love, be long-suffering one toward another. Help your brother. Like Dick said, explain to him, bro, I was there. I was there. You told me, I don't want nobody to know nothing about me. Man, you, was, you done and finished. You better repent. Tell somebody what you've been through. It ain't going to hurt. It ain't going to do them, but help them. You know, show them that they're able to overcome these things. You got the testimony they need to hear. That's all I got, Dick. Right, and the last thing you want to be, the last thing that you want to do in reference to what you just said, here, I've been through a, a situation. Her brother coming up behind me, and I don't tell him nothing, and then the same thing, he goes through that. And I could have warned him by telling him what I needed to tell him. How do you think I'm going to feel? Here I've, here, I've seen the trap. And my brother coming up right behind me. He getting ready to fall in the same trap. I'm getting ready to say, hey, don't go over there. I've been there. Don't do it. But I ain't saying nothing. And then I allow him to fall in. How am I going to feel? How, what kind of brother am I to allow that? That's the responsibility of parents. That's the reason why God made parents and children. That's the purpose. That's the reason. Read, read that again, the 14th verse. Romans 13, 14. Come on. Romans chapter 13, verse 14. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put on the commandments. Go ahead. And make not provision. And, for, make, not, and make not provision. For the flesh. For the flesh. Don't give evil an opening. Do not, do not give evil. Do not give the flesh an opportunity to take you back into wickedness. That's what pro, don't provide opportunity for sin. That's what that's what he makes not provision for the flesh. Flesh is talking about the sin in you. To do what? To fulfill the lust thereof. To fulfill the lust and the temptation that's in you. So when we come through these doors, sin and lust is still in us. But as we're journeying back to the Father, as we're journeying, those lusts and those temptations are constantly coming back up in your mind. But you have the power to not allow it to take you back. You make an excuse and allow it to come back into you. No, you're not supposed to give, give provision for that. You say, get behind me, Satan. That's what you say. When those thoughts come up, when some evil conversation come to you. That's why I was talking the way I was talking earlier. When some evil come before me, that's nothing but Satan trying to take me down the wrong road. Get the hell away from me. Get behind me, Satan. That's what that means. Y'all understand that? So, make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts and the temptations thereof. That's what that means. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians, to fulfill the lusts thereof. We're going to talk about that, a little bit of that now. 5.17. 5.17. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 17. We're not trying to fulfill the lusts that are still in us, brothers and sisters. Although we come through these doors, the, te the temptations and the lusts are still in us. Are still in us. Go ahead. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other. There's a war that's happening in our spirits when we come in here. Righteousness fighting against evil. Read. I so, gotta speed it up. So that you cannot do things that you would. So that you cannot do the things that you would do in righteousness. The temptation of evil is warring against your will to do right. Y'all with me? Read. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. You are not under the law, the old law of sacrifice. That's what I'm talking about. The old law where, the led, where, where there was, if you committed sin up underneath Moses' law, you died under two or three witnesses. Okay, now you have the chance to repent. That's what it's talking about there. Y'all understand that? Okay, that's the grace that was given unto us. If you be led by the Spirit of God, you are not to be condemned. That's what it's saying. We can repent to get ourselves right. Y'all follow me? But some people want to play with that and talk about some, well, I'm going to commit some wickedness, and while I'm in wickedness, I'm going to get myself right. You, the minute you commit wickedness, the most High might say, let a reprobate spirit get on their head now. Boom, Satan take you. Now you can't even see which way is up. That's what's happened to a lot of brothers and sisters. You played with sin, 
And you went in your right mind, you entertain sin. And you think that you can dab it in there. I can smoke some crack. And I'll get and while I'm on crack, I'm gonna get myself back off the crack. Your mind might change the minute you hit that pipe. And you be like, oh hell. I didn't know this thing was like this. I didn't know this this sin was like this. The hell with going back. I'm right now. Huh? Chicken on Passover. That's the correct thing now. You bugged out and don't know it. You're on crack and don't know it. That's the analogy so you can understand. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Once you step into that and you start playing with that evil, you learn a whole new world of evil and that becomes your center point. Where this now becomes second place. Well, you're not going to go from first to second. You're going to stay what you think is primary. Once your mind changes and you begin to subscribe to that, that becomes your world now. Y'all all right? Be very careful. That's why it says, do not play and give provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust and, to, to, and the temptations that's still in your mind. Because when you was out there, that's what you played with. You're in here, you better exercise diligence to fight that. Evil is fighting against the righteous. Good is set against evil. Y'all understand that? Read. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. These are the works that is in the flesh. When we come into these doors, this is what's in our mind. These are the works of sin, so you can understand. This is the temptations that we still battle with when we come in. Talking about something, we, we, we are saved. We repented. No, you're on your journey to repentance. Come on. Uh, what, are the, what are the works of the flesh? Read. Adultery. Come on. Fornication. Uncleanness. Lasciviousness. Idolatry. Witchcraft. Hatred. Variance. Emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before. This is, I, this is what we just, all those words is Facebook. You, this is the clickbait Facebook. That's an advertisement for Facebook. What we just read. You want to see you want to see adulteries, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness? You can find all of that on Facebook and fulfill your lust thereof. Right there. Glued. Go ahead. Which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So these people ain't getting the kingdom. Regardless of how much they think they're going to get it, their minds have been bird boxed to the point where they actually think they, all, they are, are in the truth. No, they are not in the truth. They're gone. You hear me? They're gone. How is this perpetuated? 1 Corinthians 15. How is this perpetuated? It's perpetuated through the temptations of evil communication. Like I said, YouTube, Facebook, etc. While at the same time trying to sanctify this is what we're doing. We're, we're trying to sanctify our spirit in the truth, but at the same time, we're getting bird box because we're playing and we're providing provision for the flesh. We're allowing, we're entertaining evil. When you entertain evil and still talk about some, I'm in the truth, you're going to be bird box. You're going to be done. You cannot do both. You have to exercise diligence and discipline to make sure, to make your calling and election sure. Read. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Corrupt good manners. Evil communication. Clickbait. Ooh. Click. You there for four hours. Five hours. Didn't even eat yet. Forgot to go to the bathroom. Forgot. Told the body, the body has a natural, <laughs> a natural uh, response to go to the bathroom when it needs to. You exercise enough willpower to tell your body, cool it. This Facebook stuff is too good. And it's entertainment for black folk. Just like Jerry Springer, it's the same thing. How in the world this man became to be millions off of people's misery? Because Negroes love what we read. 
gossip, filthy, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations. They love that. Teach a class on the laws of God, zero views, three views. Think about that. Clickbait. You can't clickbait keeping God's laws as, as vital to your health. That's not clickbait. Nobody would click that. <laughs> but you put some IUIC such and such, boom, 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 bam, bam. Click, 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 click. Looking for evil. Looking for gossip. And get mad if they don't see any. I remember Deacon Malachi did something so funny. Deacon Malachi in New York. He did a video called Why I Left the Truth. It was on a radio program. That was funny as hell. And when the video started, he addressed everybody and said, no, a lot of you thought that I left the body. And it had thousands of views because they said, damn, Deacon left. And that's how they thought it was. But he did that because he was talking about other people that left the body. He wasn't talking about himself. But the clickbait monsters were so <laughs> clickbait. The, the fact that he thought of that, he knew the Negro. That's what it meant. That was funny. I told him that. I was laughing like I was laughing like crazy. He said, man, I ain't going nowhere. That guy said, oh, hell, I'm going to turn this on. Let's go over to something else. And that was clickbait. That was clickbait. That's when I learned about clickbait. I learned it from that program there. Y'all all right? <laughs> um, Corinthians 1. Now I'm going to show you something. Uh, 1 Corinthians, I'm sorry. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Now, we read, be not deceived. Evil communication corrupt good manners. I want y'all to understand something, that we cannot play with sin. We come through these doors, we break bread at the end of the services, don't we? That's a serious step. A lot of people don't even pay attention to that. We say the Lord's Prayer. We're asking the Lord to deliver us from evil, lead us not into temptation. We pray for those things. We're not even paying attention to what we're reading. We're not even paying attention to what we're asking Christ for. Sitting up there saying these things and breaking bread and all that, and then you go out there and you look for every every. Uh, every scum of evil that you can find, like a, like a pig sn looking for dirt. That's how we leave. Read that. Verse 23, sir? Uh, yeah, but, but let, me, let me say something before you read that. Uh, like I said, when we pray, that's a serious action when we pray. Listen to the prayer as you're saying it. Listen to what's, what you're asking for of the Lord. Why don't we pay attention to what we're asking the Lord for? What are we asking the Lord to do for us? Think of those persons that sat among you and broke bread. Think about the people that sat in the congregation, like I said, the chair next to you, that broke bread right beside you. And now they're out there thinking that they're doing the Lord's work, and they did this. They broke bread. Y'all follow me? And they're still talking about some day in the truth. No, they are bird box, and the Lord says, I will give you your delusion. That's what the Lord says. He said, and for this cause, I will send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. You want to play around with that? Talk to me. You want to play around with that? Read Corinthians 11 and 23. Come on, brother. First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. So we're reading this. Y'all know about this. We do this at the end of every service, correct? Let me show you that we recite, read, but don't pay attention. Come on. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of so me. So every time we do this, we're supposed to think about Christ dying on the cross for us. Every time we do this, we're supposed to be thinking about the fact that Christ's body was broken for us. Playing games. Come on. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. In remembrance of me. We're supposed to remember Christ. His spilling his blood and his body being broken 
for us because by right we're supposed to be wiped out, dead, gone. Go ahead. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Come on. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. What does it mean to be unworthily to take part in this? Meaning that you're not showing diligence to make your calling and election. So I'm just going to make it simple. When you don't exercise discipline and, and, uh, and diligence to make your calling and election sure, you are guilty of this here. That's the reason why we tell new brothers and sisters, do not partake in this until you are fully persuaded in your mind that you're going to take these, that you're going to walk this walk, that you're going to endure this tunnel of trials. Don't we tell you that? This is the reason, because this is not a joke. Go ahead, read that, read that last statement again. Wherefore? Shall he eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily? So a lot of these spirits, these spirits that were sat among you that did this back out into the world, talking all this crazy stuff, they took part of this unworthily. Do y'all see that? Hello? Read. Shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord, but let a man examine himself. But before you do this, examine yourself. Examine the temptations that are still running through your mind. Examine the lusts that are still in your mind and spirit. Examine that first. Well, I know I still got a demon on me about lusting after this man's wife or lusting for this or, or, or envious of that, but I ain't going to tell nobody nothing, so I'm going to break the bread because if I don't break the bread and the people see me not breaking the bread, they're going to think I'm the devil. So a lot of people end up doing it because they don't want other people to think that they are wicked. When the man next to you might be just as wicked as you. Read that statement again. But let a man examine himself. Because nobody is examining themselves. Examine yourself. Go ahead. And so let him eat of that bread. Then you can eat of that bread. Once you examine yourself and you've said, you know what? I don't like being out there, being a coon. I hate these thoughts. I hate this, these, this conversation that I have with these wicked people. I hate all of that. And I want to change. Now I'm ready to take that cup and break that bread. That's how that works. Read. And drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Come on. For this cause, many are weak and and sickly among you, and many sleep. Most high say, I'm going to kill them. That's basically what he's saying. Many become weak, sickly, and then they sleep it dead. The most high kills them. You'll understand that. And, that. and the Lord has his timetable. We ain't wishing, how hey, you're wishing death on us? No, nigga, the Bible said that. We didn't say nothing. You got mad because we read it. That's the problem. I know it's in the Bible, but don't read it to me. No, we're going to read it to you. We're going to give it to you. Hebrews 10, 23. We're trying to escape from being niggas. We're trying to escape from being coons and wetbacks and shuck, shucking and jiving ham bone. Y'all all right? Trying to get away from that. But when you, when you refuse that, you went right back in the niggerdom. So that's why I call you that. Y'all all right? Hebrews 10. So these spirits that have broken this, that have broken the bread of the Lord and drank the cup unworthily, we're going to read about them now. Hebrews 10, 23. Come on. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 23. And this is a message to us as the teachers. Come on. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. That is dedication. That is diligence. That is, uh, what was the other word? Uh, diligence and dedication and discipline. That's what that is. Let us hold fast. Let us hold tight to the profession of our faith. This is what your profession is. Yes, we got our nine to five jobs or whatever, but your profession is you a man of the Lord to wake your people up. Y'all hear me? Come on, read. For he is faithful that promised. For he is faithful that promised. That's the most high. He promised. He promised us. Come on. And let us consider one another 
to provoke unto love and to good works. Let us consider one another to provoke each other unto love and to good works. So I'm supposed to be exhorting you to good works, not trying to tear you down and destroy you. I'm supposed to be trying to, rep trying to build you up. Come on, brother. Let's do the right thing. Let me exhort you to greatness, provoke you to good works, provoke you to keeping the commandments, my sisters. Provoke you to keeping the commandments, my brother. Provoke you to good works. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love, meaning the commandments, unto good works. Y'all all right? Read on. Not forsaken the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Not forsaken the assembling of ourselves together. So we're supposed to love to come together. Congregation coming together. We're supposed to love that. Not forsaken the assembly of ourselves. Come on. As the manner of some is. Some people want to separate themselves. Not having the spirit. Y'all know the scripture in Jude. These are they which separate themselves, having not the spirit, sensual, evil, wicked. It gives a whole list of nasty, filthy thoughts that's in these kind of people's minds. Not forsaken the assembly of ourselves together, as the manner of some of them are. But doing what? But, exhort, but exhorting one another. We're supposed to exhort one another. We're supposed to exhort one another to good works. Come on. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. You see that? As we see the day approaching. What's wrong with people? They don't see the day. Uh, that's all we've been reading is about is the last days. As we see the day approaching, we should be doing more to exhort our brothers and sisters to righteousness and greatness. What the hell am I going to turn on Facebook and look for evil for? Why am I going to waste my time with that? I got too much exhorting to do. And I want my brothers to exhort me. I want my brothers to help me. And I help my brothers. And we can exhort each other to righteousness. I want to exhort my sisters. I want to see my sisters exhort each other to greatness and righteousness. What in the world am I going to look for some clickbait foolishness for? That's the devil. That's the devil, brothers and sisters. Recognize that. Read. Verse 26. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth. For if we sin willfully, willfully, that means you know that you're breaking the laws of God. That means you're breaking bread. You've heard the sermon. You've heard the breakdown. You've heard what it meant. And then you still entertain evil. You hear a lesson like what you're hearing today. And then you're still going to go home and watch these foolish things on Facebook and become bird boxed. That's sinning willfully. What did the scripture say? Evil communication corrupt good manners. That's a law. But you're going to entertain it anyway because it's so tempting. Clickbait. I just couldn't help it. I couldn't, I couldn't resist the crack pipe. Read. After that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. Meaning you've already crucified Christ again. That's what that means. So these spirits that left up out of here and their mind got twisted, they're done. They're done. You hear what I just said? They're done. Read. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. That verse right there need to be etched in everybody's minds. There need to be a certain fearful looking. A certain fearful look when we come through these doors to keep these commandments. And don't play with evil at all. Not even for a second. Tell myself, I'm going to dial it because it looks so good. I'm going to get, I'm only going there to tell them the truth. They've already showed you that they're reprobate. Don't want to hear nothing about the script. You tell myself, I'm going to bring them back. And then the next thing you know, you boom, you gone. Go ahead. Go. Read. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Now I'm reading about these spirits that left up out of here. That's what I'm talking about. When I said left up out of here, I'm talking about those that sat beside you, broke bread and all of that. I'm talking about those that claimed that they were saved. This is the same thing as Christianity. 
Come on, tell I made it. No, your journey continues to the kingdom. None of us made it yet. What do you mean you've given up? I'm leaving quietly. There's no such thing as that. Read. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be brought, shall he be thought worthy who have trodden underfoot the Son of God? Let me read 28 and 29 together because I want y'all to get this for those of you that don't understand it. The Most High in the book of Hebrews is talking to the Israelites. He says, He that despises Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. That's a terrible judgment. If two people said that you committed a sin that was worthy of death, that was it. There was no crying. There was no pleading. There was no please don't do it. The judgment was you had to be stoned to death. You had to die. Period. And you had those what I call professional stone throwers. Huh? And they tied you whenever you was bitten put to death. You was tied to a stake that gave you about a three foot radius. Well, you think you can dodge them rocks. And these brothers, that's, that's what they do. They practice. They probably have tournaments on how they can <laughs> throw those rocks. And you got a group of them. You know how we are. Well, I, I, if I throw this one here, I'm going to hit him in the eye. And that's going to kill him. Well, you, you, you playing with him. I'm going to give him the death blow. You follow me? And these stone, these stone throwers. So you're at the stake and you're trying to dodge some rocks coming. Then the brother, he's good with it. He thought like a curve. The daggone stone come and vroom, bam. <laughs> and hit you. <laughs> a curved stone. And it'd be the death blow, knock your eye out the socket. And yet, and you it takes a while to die. You got to think about how gruesome that is because your death don't come in instant. You dying slowly. Your head get busted open. Your teeth get knocked out. Your hand get, the, your joints get beat up. That's what we're reading. That's what we just read in the 20th verse. He that despised Moses' law. If you was committed uh, homosexuality, the judgment for that was death. If you was into idolatry, the judgment of that was death. There was no other thing about it. Y'all understand what I'm saying? How bad is that? Is that a bad way to die, brothers and sisters? Sisters, is that a bad way to die? Because the death takes a while. You'd be, you be tied to that stake for hours. Brothers are tired of throwing. They got to get a new shift of stone, of, of stone throwers to finish the death. Yeah. You get knocked out and wake back. They said, no, no, keep on doing it until he's dead. It says what? He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. So that was a terrible death, was it not, brothers and sisters? I'm going to show you how people are simple when it comes to the Bible. As bad as that is, read the next one. Of how much sore punishment, suppose ye. Hold it. But this is worse than what we was reading. How much more of a sore punishment is this one? Worse than the Moses one. But we play with it. Read. Shall he be thought worthy who have trodden under the foot the Son of God and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing? He counted this dude and this woman counted the death of Christ as an unholy thing. That's worse than being stoned. That's why it says, suppose ye a more sore punishment. That's what that meant. This is worse. So to come inside this truth. To break bread, to ask the Lord to forgive you and, 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 to, and to remove the temptations from you. And you take that lightly and then you play with evil and then you get bird box and you go back out there. Your mind is done. Your punishment is going to be worse than what happened to those people in the past. That's what they're saying. Do y are y'all getting this? You sisters, are y'all getting this? Do y'all understand what we're reading? Read on. And have done despite... Unto the spirit of grace. Look at that last part. And you have done despite the spirit of grace. The spirit of grace was Christ dying on the cross that allowed you to be spared from Moses' judgment. But you said the hell with that. That's what despite me. The hell with that. I'm going to still be a nigger and a coon. Regardless. 
To hell with Christ. That's basically what you're saying. Do y'all understand that? Despite the spirit of the grace that was given to you. The grace gave you a chance to fix yourselves up through the trials. The grace was given to you when you came through the doors because you're going to stumble in this walk. You're going to stumble, but the grace is given to you for you to stumble and get up and repent and get yourselves back right before your mind get messed up, before you can't even see straight no more. Y'all understand that? Read on. For we know him that have said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. For we know him that vengeance belongeth unto me. If my brother do something evil to me, I am not going to render evil for evil. I'm going to let the Lord handle that. Because objectively, I would hope that my brother repent. But love worketh no ill to his neighbor. The Bible does not allow me to do evil to my brother. Y'all understand that? When you get to the point where you think that's of God, you finished. Read. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. And that's the reason why the Lord said, I will judge the people. That's not for you to do. Let me judge my people. Go ahead. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So that's what happened to these brothers and sisters that played with the breaking of bread, that played with the Lord's word. But do you think they paying attention to that last verse? It is a fearful and a dreadful, it's basically a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Ah, that's how they treat it. I just sit back because I believe in the judgment of this Bible. I believe it, and I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. Temptations. I'm going to get these things out. I'm almost done. I'm going to squeeze it out. I got it. I'm, I'm going to finish it. Y'all all right? I'm going I'm to speed it up a little bit because I know probably Bishop will be on soon, so I, I want to make sure that I don't interrupt this class. So I'm going to speed it up, but I definitely want to finish this. Come on. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9. Read. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. This is another prayer that we say. Go ahead. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Go ahead. And forgive us our debts. Forgive us our own debts, Christ, the Most High. We're asking the Lord to forgive us. Go ahead. As we forgive our debtors. Hold it. As we forgive our brothers, our debtors meaning the people that, that are owed us. If I'm asking the Lord to forgive me, but I can't forgive my brother, what kind of brother am I? You're asking the Lord to forgive you, but you can't forgive your brother. You're the devil. And the white man, Esau, he gives you Facebook to spew all your evil out. And you're tempted by the like, 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 and you're drawn in. Oh, look at all the likes I got. You're full of demons. You can't put the demon down because the likes is your dopamine. Y'all getting this? Read. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So we're asking the Lord to lead us not into our own temptations. That's what that's talking about. Your temptations of when you was in the world, you're coming in here, and those temptations are still coming up in your mind. And you're saying, Lord, please deliver me from that because I used to be, I used to be this, I used to be that. And the thoughts keep coming back to me. And I want to quell that, Lord. I want to, I want to remove those thoughts from my mind, Lord. That's when you're saying, lead me not into the temptation. Everybody's temptation ain't the same. Some people's temptation is, <laughs> I, some of the stuff is crazy. Some people lust for man but men. Some men lust for other men behind. Some people lust for uh, women. Women lusting after women. Y'all understand what I'm saying? If you're struggling with some of those things, you said, Lord, take me away from that. You don't play with that. I had to dig with it. You know what? And I know I said something kind of filthy, but believe it or not, the Negro thinks this way. Some of the stuff that you read in Leviticus, the 18th chapter, that's us. Men sleeping with with, with goats and bats and well not a bat i guess i don't know they're sleeping with all they're doing all kind of craziness 
And you read that story, you say, who does this? The Negro does these things. Black people do these things. That's why God had it in there. Y'all understand what I'm saying? There's a whole chapter, y'all can read about that thing, on some of the filth that's going on in Israel now with some of the stuff going down. I ain't going to talk about it. Y'all all right? Read on. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Give me Mark chapter 7, 21. Lead us not in temptation. The temptation of the unclean spirits that are still in us. I'm going to read some of the temptations that are still in us. I read it earlier with the fruits of the flesh. We're going to read some more. Mark chapter 7 and verse 21. For from within. From, what, from, from what's inside you. This is the self that I was talking about. From inside you. This is the part of you that has to be denied when you come in here. Like Christ said, deny yourself and follow me. You have to deny this. Those things that are within you. That's had, that has been incubated in your spirit when you was out there in this world. Y'all understand that? Read. Out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts. Evil thoughts. Thoughts change to words. Words change to action. Action develops into habits. Habits make character. Character brings to your destiny. This is the reason why the Negroes are all kind of problems now. Because his thoughts ain't right. The Hispanic, his thoughts ain't right. Her thoughts ain't right. Because these are the things that's in their mind. This is Facebook, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Adulteries. Adulteries. Go Forn ahead. Fornication. Read. Murders. Murders. Come Thefts. on. Covetousness. Covetousness. You Wait. wanting what somebody else has illegally. You're doing all kind of deceptive ways to get what they have. You don't want to obtain it in righteousness. You're not content with your own wages. But no, you want to break. You want to break all kinds of uh, schemes. Bring out all kinds of schemes to covet somebody else's stuff. Come on, wickedness, wickedness, deceit, deceit, lasciviousness, lasciviousness, nasty, filthy, disgusting, sexual, deviant thoughts. Go ahead. An evil eye. An evil eye. Blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these things come from within. All of these nasty, filthy, wicked things come from within. How did they get in there? Because they have been incubated and encouraged and forged in this wicked society to the point where you think it's normal. Go ahead. And defile the man. So all of these things come from within and they defile you as a man because it becomes your destiny. Y'all understand that? Matthew chapter 12, verse 43. So these things are in us when we come through these doors. These unclean spirits are in us. So when you come in here and you're trying to get yourselves right through your welcome home process, through your repentance process, you're trying to get yourselves right. And while you're doing that, you're applying the laws of God, trying. You're, 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 you're studying, praying and applying. You're trying those things. And those evil spirits are warring against the commandments. So you have a decision to make. So when you come in, this is what happens. Come on. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 43. Read. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest. These evil spirits are seeking rest. They're walking around the congregation and see who's going to entertain the wicked spirit that is in another brother or another sister. Brothers come in and they got the evil spirit in them. Sister come in, she got an evil spirit in her. But when it's gone out of her and it's gone out of him through application of God's commandments and so forth, another brother who ain't studying will pick up that same spirit and it'll be on him. Through what? Filthy communication. Evil communication. Now he's bit. Now she's bit. Now you got a whole nest of evil and wickedness going on. But in this case, it says that the, the, the evil spirit don't find anybody else because everybody else is circumspect of evil. Everybody else is like, hell no, I don't want that. So what does the evil spirit do? It goes and chills for a while. Like, the, like Satan said to Christ, I'll be back. Huh? They say he, he, he left Christ alone for a season. That's what these evil spirits do. They leave you because they're going to wait and see, are you going to maintain your diligence? 
Are you going to maintain your discipline? You said that you was being welcome home. Let's see if you're going to do that. I'm going to visit you back in six months. Let's see how you're doing. Y'all all right? Read. And findeth none. And when this evil spirit is looking around the congregation after it left you, it's looking for another brother or sister. And it doesn't find it because everybody's on the A game. Go ahead. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came so out. This might be six months later. I will come back in that same brother or sister because I want to see if they're studying. I want to see if they're maintaining that discipline that they were all gung-ho. Come your shala. Be strong in the Lord, the powers, might. All that in the beginning. But six months later, he's battling with weed. He's battling with pornography. He's battling with, with, with looking at a beast. <laughs> a chicken. Crack. Huh? I shouldn't say a chicken, right? People, do, people, do people try to get, on, get inside a chicken too? Huh? I don't know. I, I, huh? There they do. Damn. <laughs> Read. And when he is come, he findeth it empty. He when it when when he come, when the evil spirit comes back and the same brother or sister that got rid of the evil spirit comes back and it finds that same brother or sister empty. Empty what? Swept and garnished. Meaning he or she wasn't studying. That's what it means. Found it empty of God's laws. So when that same spirit that was in you comes back and revisits you. It ain't coming back by itself. Read. Then goeth he and taketh with him seven other spirits. So now you ain't just smoking crack. Now you're doing angel dust. Now you now you into all kinds of uh, fornication. What the, all kind of other wickedness? That's what what they call it. Gateways, gateway sins. One sin death lead, leads into murder. Leads into hatred. Everything else is all coming back with you. And it's coming back with a vengeance. Y'all all right? Read. Seven other spirits more wicked than himself. Seven more meaning gateway spirits. Worse than the first spirit. You got rid of one. Seven more came back. And you, you look. If you want to you look on you. Look at some of the spirits that used to sit among us. Listen to how they're talking now. You hear some of the craziest stuff. I ain't going to tell you to do it because you might get bird boxed. But I'm, I'm telling you. Can you imagine, like, Bishop and I, mainly us two. Bishop, 1990. Myself, 1991. Can you imagine how much craziness we've seen over the years of bugged out people? People that sat beside us. People that was in camp with us. There's videos of us teaching with a whole camp of people, all of them gone. Into complete madness. Read. And they enter in and dwell there. And when these spirits come back in, they get in there and they get comfortable and they dwell there and they stay there. That means you have your delusion. Strong delusion. And them demons, they brought furniture. They got the ottoman. They got the color TV. They sit back, got drinks. Smoking. They, they rolling. They done. And we've had brothers that we talked to when we saw them going out, and they just said, I just can't do it. I'm done. I'm finished. I'm, I'm gone. And he, he wasn't even screaming about it. He just said, I, I, I just can't do it no more. Gung-ho when he came in. And he was cordial, quote-unquote cordial, explaining it like, this is, I'm gone. Like it was no consequence. That's when it's done, brothers and sisters. Y'all hear me? And it's a sad thing to see that. And I'm talking about we went to war together in the streets I'm talking about, in the, in the, in the truth. Your right-hand man, armor bearer at some point. Your reader, stuff like that. Read. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Is worse than the first. Come on. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. So don't be surprised, my brothers and sisters. This generation is going to have them, but you must stay, be steadfast and hold the line. Can y'all dig it? You have to maintain your discipline and your diligence in this truth, brothers and sisters, because the days are evil. The days thereof are evil. 
Okay? Y'all got that? Uh, the unclean spirit versus the clean spirit. The kingdom against the Babylon made self. Give me Romans 7. Now I'm getting into this is what the lesson was all about. I led y'all up to this here and I'm almost done. I put this near the back. Y'all all right? I'm almost done. I'm going to get it in. What verse, sir? Uh, 14. Romans chapter 7 and verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual. For we know that the law of God is spiritual. Go ahead. But I am carnal, sold under sin. I am carnal, sold under sin. Once we understand this, we know that we need help. That's what this is saying. Go ahead. For that which I do, I allow not. For the, for the righteous things that I would do in spirit, my temptations allow me not. That's what Paul is saying. He's speaking about the, the thought of concupiscence. That's what he's talking about. Everybody's with me. Sisters, y'all with me. Read that again. For that which I do. For that which I end up thinking. I'm thinking on concupiscence. Go ahead. I allow not. But I don't want to think on concupiscence. I don't want to think on evil. I don't want my thoughts to be like that. Go ahead. For what I would. For what I want to do. I don't want to think on this. I want to think on God's commandments only. Come on. That do I not. That I don't do because the evil keeps coming back in my mind. This is the battle that we go through when we come in here, brothers and sisters. Y'all with me? Come on, read. But what I hate. But the thing that I hate, I hate the thought of evil and wickedness, but the temptation is there. Go ahead. That I do. That I do because the thought keeps coming and I keep entertaining the thought. Y'all all right? Come on. If then I do that which I would not. If then if I end up doing what I hate to do. I consent unto the law that is good. I consent unto the law that the law is good because it's showing me that my thoughts are wicked. Y'all all right? Read. Now then, it is no more I that do it. So now it is no more. It, it is my will to not do this. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. But sin that dwelleth in me. But it's the temptation that still dwells in me. The process of repentance. When you come in here, a lot of you, all of us, we still got sin in our minds that keeps coming back. That's what this is talking about. Y'all all right? Read. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Meaning what I've learned in Babylon. This is the thoughts that's still in my mind is filthy. Go ahead. For... To will is present with me. Because I will, the will to do right is in me. I want to do right. Brothers and sisters, I want to do right. That's what we say. Come on. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. But how to keep the evil from coming in my mind, I'm having trouble doing that because the evil keeps coming back. And I want to just get rid of it completely. Come on. For the good that I would, I do not. For the good that I would do, I don't end up doing it because the thought of concupiscence keeps popping up. Come on. But the evil which I would not, that I do. But the evil that I would not allow to be is in up being because it keeps coming in there and it's in my mind. Read. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it. So if I do that, that I would not want to do, it is no more I that's doing it. Listen to what Paul is explaining. He's letting you know that there's a righteous side of him and then there's the, the thought of evil in him. This is letting you know that there's a duality in all of our spirits. That's the point that I'm trying to get y'all to. Like when Christ said, deny yourself, it's your righteous spirit denying the evil that's still prevalent that keep coming back up. Like we would say, why did I allow myself to do that? The I is the righteousness in you. Y'all understand that? Why did I allow myself, why did I allow myself to go into that car or whatever? Meaning that you have to control yourself. You have to direct yourself. Mind over yourself. Mind over matter. Mind over your thoughts. You, you control what you want to do. That's what that's talking about. Read. But sin that dwelleth in me. But the sin that's dwelling in me, that's what keeps popping back up. Go ahead. I verse, you in? verse 21. Read. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Because the law is revealing that the thought is evil. Go ahead. For I delight in the law of God 
after the inward man. The inward man is the part that Christ is dealing with. So when, when the Bible says for you to deny yourself, the you is what Christ is talking to. Christ is talking to your actual spirit. And he's telling you to deny the filthy mind that you've been raised in. Read. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind. Warring against the law of God. That's what he's talking about. Another law, meaning the law of sin. Go ahead. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. You're, you're getting that? Y'all understanding this, right? Sisters, y'all understand what we're reading? Go ahead. Oh, wretched man that I am. So he recognizes that. He says, oh, wretched man that I am because the thought is being, I'm still entertaining it. Like when we come in here, we entertain these thoughts. But Paul is saying, please take it away from me. I don't want to think like this. Some of us don't think like this. Some of us say, no, let me continue to feed that demon. Let me go on Facebook. Let me go on YouTube and feed the demon. And you wonder why you're behind get bit. Read. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Because I'm going to surely die if I keep going down this road. Go ahead. I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then, with the mind... What I, verse are you in? Verse 25. Read 24 again. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? This is where discipline and diligence comes in. That's, when, that's what's going to help get you out of that thought. You're going to have to apply diligence and discipline to put your own thoughts in, 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 in prostration to the righteousness of God's Bible. That's what that means. You have to, in other words, you have to deny the self. The kingdom of God versus the self in you. That's what this is talking about. Y'all understand that? That's how this is going. Luke chapter 17 and 20. I'm almost done. Thank God. <laughs> I'm only saying that because I, 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 I don't want to intercept the bishop's class, and I wanted to get this lesson out. Y'all appreciate this? Yes, sir. All praises. Luke chapter 17 and verse 20. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Don't look for the kingdom of God to come with observation. We have to think that it's going to drop down. Listen to what the scriptures say. Come on. Neither shall they say, lo, here, or lo, there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. So the kingdom of God is within us. So what's stopping us? Our, our unwillingness to be disciplined and, and, and to make our calling and election sure through diligence. That's what's stopping it. The kingdom is already within you. But we, with our weak selves, allow some evil to come in our thoughts and mess us up. The kingdom is already yours. But you're going to allow Satan for some clickbait foolishness to drive you back out there in evil. And I'm telling you, all of the years that I've seen it, every nooker that fell to some demon like this, they're gone long finished. Finished. Long, many years ago, I'm talking, for the many spirits that I've seen who allowed themselves to get bird box before there was a Facebook, before there was a YouTube, listening to some dumb doctrine, and minds got twisted up. And the brothers, the brothers that messed the brother's head up, he acted like he loved them while he was messing his head up. Soon as he got messed up, going back into the world, you can't find none of these dudes that messed their head up is even looking for that destroyed soul. I'm talking about countless of them. I can name them. Bishop know who I'm talking about. We've known many people in this truth whose minds got messed up. And the knuckleheads that messed them up ain't even looking for them spirits that's out here destroyed now. Some of them are dead. Died in evil. And none of the knuckles that messed their heads up is even looking for them, acting like they love them. But once their heads got messed up and corrupted, they ain't look for them no more because Satan's job was done. Y'all all right? Almost done. Hebrews. Okay. I'm almost done. Hebrews. Uh, the verse that I wanted was after 21. I wanted verse 25. It says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with my mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So that's, I wanted to read that to show you what the, what the law of flesh was 
it was sin, and the laws of God is the commandments. That's the reason why I wanted that read. Hebrews, third, the last scripture, Hebrews 13 and 17. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 17. <clears throat> Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls. Come on. As they that must give account, that they may do it with joy. We try to warn our brothers and sisters through guidance and counsel, because we're watching for your souls. We're responsible for your souls. Go ahead. That they may do it with joy and not with grief. We don't want to have to tell the Lord. We don't want to have to say that this brother or sister didn't listen and then got jacked up. We don't want to have to give that kind of account because they didn't listen to counsel. Go ahead. For that is unprofitable for you. That's unprofitable for that brother or sister that, didn't obey, that did not listen to their leaders that was telling them right by the Bible. I ain't talking about no wicked leader. I'm talking about a leader that's dealing right by the scriptures. Y'all all right? Read 18. Pray for us, for we trust we have a good conscience in all things willing to live honestly. That's, so pray for your leadership, brothers and sisters. That's why it says pray for us. Pray for your leadership. Okay, because we are fighting many battles trying to, trying to stabilize and, and, and bring the souls, the repentant souls to the most high. We got a hell of a fight on our hands. Y'all understand that? Okay. So all of this is involved when we're journeying back home. That's the point, okay? So that's why I wanted to go over that lesson, all right? So, um, you know, the scriptures say for us to sanctify our people through the truth, that word is true. For our, our, our job is to bring this word out to our people, to sanctify them, to clean them up, to cause them to repent and to be diligent and stay in this truth until death or until Christ comes back. Y'all all right? Okay, with that, I'm going to say shalom. of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.